TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Man, let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Shout out to the first responders, man. I know y'all in here hitting that like button, pushing the videos, man. I appreciate it. Don't forget, man, if you're looking for any old videos, they are over here on my Facebook. Link down in the description. We do got the Patreon busting for any videos that we cannot watch on YouTube. We watch them over on Patreon. This is a list. Uh, yeah, this is up to date. This is England. Yep, 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 yep. Uh. And we do got the Discord as well. The Discord, the link to it is down in the description. Everything's down in the description, man. And this is what you came for. This is what you clicked on. Best Wood, Cartel Boss, Nottingham. David Gunn, True Crime Podcast 305. I told you I wanted to get into these crime gangster podcasts. Uh, they're just super long. <laughs> so, man, if y'all could, like, tell me, like, in the Discord or somewhere, drop links to ones that y'all want me to do. Probably in the Discord. Maybe in the Discord, man. I am not sub to his channel, so let me sub. Let me like the video. Practice what I preach, man. Let's get into it. If they'd have found you guilty, how much time would you have got? I'd have, I'd have died in prison. I did, when my brother got a 35, I'd have I, uh, Okay, this must be real video. Okay, because I skipped it for that for a month. I skipped all of this because I thought it was just like a ah, big desert eagle. Cate for three years, Cate for four years. So I've done every top security, every special unit, everyone in the country. I've, I've done absolutely every every one of them and you know, a violence on all of them. Good couple. Good rich tease while I watch. Uh, Robert Mosley, I've, I've done both with Kenny Noy, Catwalk Kev, Kev Lane. Curtis Warren, all of them. Killed someone with a, a single punch at, outside Boots in, in Nottingham City Centre. Got three and a half years for that for a manslaughter. It's not a murder, mate. Let me just beat him. So I bit his eyelids off and his lips off and, and swallowed them. But that, that's so I bit his eyelids off and his lips off and, and swallowed them. But What am I watching? <laughs> you did what, bro? That, that's what I had to do, because he's cut my daughter's eyes off. I thought, I'm going to scar you for life, mate. You ain't had to do that. I used to have one of those daft koshers up my sleeve with gas in. People say, hell, Dave, who are you? Gas them. I put it back up my sleeve. <laughs> I'll have to find out who's done it. Tech them round, wear them in, get the people to tread on the reds. Uh, and all that, or, or, or smash their hands in with hammers, and that's the sort of thing that went off. Because we're all Iris Cate, you see, so you're, you're strapped up in, in pursuits and with prisoner on the back and everything, helicopters, cars, guns, all, all around the courts, guns are drawn. If they'd have found you guilty, how much time would you have got? I'd have, I'd have died in prison. I'd have, when my brother got a 35, I'd have got the same. Today we have got a massive story, oh. loads of viewers have requested this one over the years and if you have seen any of the news stories about the Bestwood Cartel and the Gun Brothers then this is the one you've been waiting for. But the thing is a lot of journalists, authors, clickbaiters have run with this and there's all kinds of myths, exaggerated stories and Dave Gunn is going to put those to rest today when he tells his story and his brother is serving 36 35 35 35 right life yeah and 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 dave himself has done over 20 years that i've done about 23 yeah Do I've, done, to... I've done i've done 11 out of the last 15 just, just for nonsense mate but do you want to give the viewers just an idea of the prisons you've been for? um I d on the last sentence I did. I was Irish Cate for three years, Cate for four years. So I've done every top security, every special unit, everyone in the country. I've, I've done absolutely every every one of them, and you know, had violence on all of them with staff and. You know, but it, it... 
So not only was you a menace in the streets, you was a menace in the prison. You was category A. You was top, top, top tier gangster. Okay. It make us the man, that's why I say so you just have to roll with it. There's some bad times, some good times, some good people in there. But I've actually done lots of Trying to make sure I didn't do a David Gunn. Some different jails. And 16 on remand, which is caused so they can upset your, your routine. And then it takes three months for your paperwork to follow you. So you can't study your murder cases because they've got it for three months. Then it follows you, it lands on you, they move you again and again and again. And it's just non stop. And who are some of the more well-known characters you've served time with? I've done it. I've been on the special unit with Charlie, uh, Robert Morsley. I've, I've done both with Kenny Noy, Catwalk Kev, Kev Lane, Curtis Warren, all of them, everybody, all the top security lads. And your brother then, um, Colin, he's been cat aid for how many years? Colin's now, he's still high risk cat aid, but he's been, he's the longest one in British history. He's been doing it for 17 years now. And he's been exceptional three times as well, uh, where you get removed to the unit on 10 man on lock at Belmarsh. And um, it's just, you're out on your own. There was just him, Bieber and Curtis there at one stage. But yeah, he's, he's been high risk cat for 17 years. He's trying to come off it, but not, not much hope of it with the way the police are going on and everything and, and the silliness they say. Not a, that with a 17 year history of cat well, This is gonna be all right, tough. Before we get to all that then, let's just go back to you guys growing up. What was that like? Yeah, we had rough times, you know, single parents and never really had much. Very clean, but my mum had to work every hour, God sent, just to feed us and everything. So you start to thieve in and, and trying to earn money for the family and, you know, you're doing all that to look after the family. But growing up, it was a, it was a good time, brilliant, but got very handy with the fists and, you know, just throw your weight about and <laughs> as, as, as children. But as you grow up and get older, you, you want big, bigger and better things, don't you? So you're just progressing. To, you, you go from from burglaries to robbing, robbing garages and things like that, and, and then finally you're into drugs, and that's where the that's where the money was at the time. What about the rave scene? Did that chill you out? Oh, the yeah. rave scene was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. Well, what was your first rave? Because we came down to we didn't get down to Nottingham. We went to Birmingham. He sounded like he was turned. I think I did a. a um, a Sean Atwood, At, I don't, maybe, I don't, I can't recall. Birmingham Rag Market, we went to Coventry, the Eclipse. The Eclipse, yeah. Shelley's, yeah. Stoke. And, and Sheffield, they had them all up there. And, and they had the, the first massive one was that 25,000 people one at Fantasia at Castle Donington. Yeah. That was a brilliant rave. When, yeah. when Spoonie and, and Top Buzz and all them was on. Yeah. Brilliant rave. Absolutely brilliant. I had the flyers for all of them from 89, 90, and then um, the cops seized them and, and kept used them as evidence against Did they? Yeah, Bastards. Yeah, yeah. So what was it like taking ecstasy for you? And I, I've never really bothered with drugs, you know, in, in them days. I mean, before, obviously it was called Ease then. It was them yeah, white, white, white doves, doves. it was called. Yeah. And, and they was all selling them. They was going for 25 quid a pill. And I said to our kid, let's get into this, mate. What's going on? How come these, these wankers again all the dough? Yeah. But so obviously you, you try and you try your hand, you're only young, 19 and 20, but yeah. you get knocked back and that you get a bit angry and, <laughs> but it was great. There was, there was good buzz though. There was a good buzz. Did I, hold on. Let me see. Yeah, that's it. Maybe I didn't never try. I'm gonna try today. You had a good time on him. Because a lot of vi like the violence like reduced. Because yeah. Liverpool versus Manchester, they were scared to each other's cities. Yeah. So I had mates in both, but then they get under ease and they're all hugging, they're and hugging everything. and kissing. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can eat, you can eat them one minute, and half hour later you'll be, you'll be sticking lips on them, <laughs> telling them you love them. <laughs> yeah, mental. So school then for you, what was that like? School was good. School was great. You know, no exams or nothing. I just dropped out of everything. Just, just, just doing my own thing and. I was working in old people's homes and all that as a child, but after school, that's when it all started. You're fighting and fighting other gangs and that. You know, as you, you know, as, as children, that's what you did. But school was good. We had a good, a proper good upbringing. Um, my, my mum was, my mum was. A... How old is he? Cause he, he was as children. That's what you do. Not all children do that, do they? 
I mean, that's what I did, but I'm just saying, you know. Because she used to, when the cop was ready for it, she'd be hitting him with shoes and all sorts. Picking some other fuckers, she'd say. But not all the time. Yeah. You said some of those gangs. What were the gangs back then? The, well, there was those, there was those Bestwood lot. The, you know, it was known as the Bestwood Hustlers. There was only 15 and 16, to, you know, tossers really, but <laughs> you, you think you're the big men, don't you, at that age? Yeah. Then you was fighting Edwards Lane, Arnold, Bulwell. You were just going around all different schools mm. fighting them. Just to see, just to show you that you're the cop of the schools and that, you know, that's how it was. And what, what were you on a path where you were never going to have a straight career? Well, I did. I worked for I worked for the council as a gardener. Then I set my own car business up. But you, 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 you're constantly trying to do better and earn more, and and you know you start you just start dipping into things, and that's better than this, and that gets put on the lay by, and you move ahead with this one, and you know. It, been a, it's been horrific, but it's been brilliant. It's been a good ride. Yeah. But would I do it again? I don't think I would, no. You all right to just elaborate on the ride? Because going from like being in your late teens, the news reports were saying this cartel had like hundreds of people working from all this stuff. Yeah. Once, how, how does it go from that, a teenager, from, to that? Well, from, from say, I was married at 19. Me and my wife have been together since we was nine years old. So we're married at 19. You you gotta have been born in 1902 or something. Not what you say? I'm sorry. Nin, 1902 is crazy. 1950 something because they, they don't make it like that no more. They do not. I wish I would have found my wife at nine. I would have been cooling by now. You know what I'm saying? Relaxed. <laughs> and then obviously I did in the 80s. I was forever doing forced sentences, YP sentences for for doing what I do in town fighting and that. Then, you know, I, I killed someone with a, a single punch outside Boots in, in Nottingham City Centre. I got three and a half years for that, for a manslaughter. Is that 19. someone who started on you? Yes, yeah, so me and my wife had just got married and someone's tried to grope her. Oh. And, and, and he just went outside, I smacked him, hit his head on the curb. And I, I got nicked for that, remanded for that. That was the first See. one. And then There's quite a few guys in prison, isn't there, for yeah. things like that? Oh, Someone's yeah. got set up to the mission. Yeah, so they bang them. Punch, and or... behind, there, behind your ear is the weakest part of your skull, and if you land on it, you, you're a goner. Right. Because it shoots into your brain. Right. That's what happens. Bloody hell. Were you surprised? And um, Was it like, you know, going to court for all that and stuff? Was it upsetting or...? Well, it was part, part of the course for me. But it, uh, when you're young, it's upsetting. But yeah. as you get older, you, you just get bitterer and bitterer and... You know, it's hard for your family. So when you're in the jail, you, you, you get you get drugs in, don't you? You sell the drugs to, to feed your family. And everybody was doing it in the 90s. That's how it was. You just got visits, shoved it all up your arse, and job done. There were no cameras around in them days. So you knew everybody. Nonchalant. Yeah, you just got visits, and you... Sh what'd, you what'd you do with it, my boy? Got visits, shoved it all up your arse, and job done. There were no cameras around in them days. So you knew everybody inside? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, because we was, we was prominent at 19 and 20. You know? He still look young though, so maybe not fifties, maybe in his sixties he was born. Because he looks rather young. Yeah. No, it was well known. But so when you got out on that sentence, then what was your life like? It was good. That's what that's that's when I went back to work and with, with the council, and things was nice. And then you, you need more money than they can pay. So, and the, you get people on your estate at the time who were selling drugs or absolute nonners and you're thinking what 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 are these earning all this you know driving around in the day it was xr free eyes and that <laughs> cabrolets and that but you think yeah i said to our kid what are these doing these wankers let's yeah. have this so we just took it off them yeah. and started doing it ourselves uh, that's how it's been but i'll talk about it because i've done the jail for it so yeah you know but you've got to fill the cupboards or call by crook at that age you, you know your family need feeding i, I have four children yeah so Damn, Colin then back then was he in and out of the Boston's as well? Yeah, Co age? Colin did a few, but Colin Colin used to be known as Knuckles because because he's got massive hands and he just used to snore him. Yeah, just used to put him to sleep in, in one punch and that. So no no one had talked to Colin when they had problems with Colin. They used to come and talk to me, Dave. Can you sort this out? Because if they're good to him, he'll just pull a face and bow you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how it's always been. Bless him. Yeah, it's, but it's good stuff, Colin man. But they've just proper gone to town this time and stitched him up. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get to that then. Yeah. All right, so you decide to take over. Um, does that mean you like you taxed the local people that were doing it already? Or? No, no, just, we're just told them they're not doing it no more. We're doing it and you're off the scene. And only people who sell this round here is us. This is my, my, our firm's job and anybody else does it is going to be serious consequences. So, you know, and, and obviously serious consequences happened. Are you able to elaborate on that? 
Well, people people got serious beatings, and I would imagine like that kind of approach. People did test the theory out. Like, who is this dude? I mean, I'm, let me. I'm gonna do it anyway. Testing that theory got people worked up. Uh, God, man, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Makes sense. People was put in hospital, you know. But uh, as, as far as I am not. I can't really, I can't really elaborate any further. Did you get that. convicted of stuff around that time? Yeah, I was always locked up. Yeah, always locked up. Not the man I thought I was. <laughs> so, what was your next <laughs> sentence after the one you I did described? that one. Um, what did I get then? I've, I've done fifteen months, three years. I've done a four and a half. Eight and a half. So was that all drug related then? No, no, only the last one was drug related. I've okay. never been nicked for drugs. Man, that's crazy, man. First of all, look at this man wrist. His wrist going crazy. <laughs> this is tough. Uh, but like, living this type of lifestyle, like, it's like, it's really two, three ways it can go, man. Like, really, when they be saying that, that be real talk. It's either you're going to be locked up, bed. Or, in, or 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 you could you might slither through a crack, but that's that's rare. And this man was locked up for a third of his life. Just the last one, but the, the, the my, my major one is where my daughter was nine years old in a bar. She was having a Sunday lunch with my wife and the children. And a, a, a man fell into the table, not the Coca Cola or whatever. She she jumps up screaming. He's belted her in the eye. <gasps> so I've got a phone call. I've gone down. And my, my pal's got one of them, and I said, "It's not a murder, mate. Let me just beat him." So I bit his eyelids off and his lips off, and, and swallowed him. But now the backstory to this is crazy. My man's. They was at a brunch on a Sunday with his kids. His wife was at brunch with his with his kids. They was cool and eating, eating good because it's brunch, eating good, or lunch, whatever one he said. Somebody bumped into the table instead of staying. Oh, I'm so sorry. There, excuse me, excuse me. I apologize. Let me get you another coat. Let me get you some napkins. But he hits his nine year old daughter in the stomach. You never know who, what, when, where, what you or what you doing to people or who it is. Like this man came through. What did you do? Say it again, because I don't want to say. Beat him, so I bit his eyelids off and his lips off, and, and swallowed him. This this a different. This dude different. Talk about sending a message, but. That, that's what I had to do because he's cut my daughter's eyes so I thought I'm going to scar you for life mate he's bashed bashed a, a nine year old yeah child. nine year old cut all her eyelid up and yeah that's and then as we've gone in the bar he's like I can't even knock him I'm out of the bar to my family so I thought you're going to sleep here mate and I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to town on you and that's what I did I just, I just ended him mate with some, some fists and feet and then bit him just let him know what, what, what time was going it was. on in his? Drunk, 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 proper drunk, one of them. Bashing nine-year-olds. Nine-year-old daughters, yeah, and my nine-year-old child. Holy shit. Like, it can't happen, can it? It can't happen. It can't happen. I got... That liquid courage is something else. Four year, nine month for it. Yeah, you should have got a medal. Yeah, and he come and give evidence as well, I can't believe it. He was locked up at the time. It's always the way, isn't these yeah. cowards who are hitting kids? And hitting women. Come and give evidence. Come and give evidence, wanker. But he's dead now. I seen his wife the other day. I said, what's happened to that wanker? Where is he now? I said, he's dead, Dave. I said, thank fuck for that. Piece of shit. Absolutely. Yeah, it, but he was locked up during the two years because he battered the bird. His wife, he hammered her. She obviously stuck him in. And then he, he's come from Shrewsbury because he, he couldn't be placed in the Midlands because of our connections. So yeah. he was in a jail in Shrewsbury and he come and gave evidence. He got me four years, nine months. But I'm sorry if I'm blurry, man. I'm recording at night. It is what it is. You know. So there's a woman beat, uh, a kid beat, and a snitch. And a snitch, yeah. <laughs> no good cunt. Daddy's dead. <laughs> What, what was the next sentence? After that one, what did I get after that? I think I, I got a three for a violent disorder. And what led to that? that? It was a New Year's Eve party, and one of the lads had been thrown out by the, by the host. So they've, they've come and woke me up and said, Dave, this bloke threw us out, he's punched me on the nose. So we all went round with baseball bats and stoved him in. But, hey, uh, bro, they did not play no type of games. That was the days in them days. Yeah. That's what happened. Humiliating people, you, you went to sleep. 
So all these prison sentences so far in the story that you've described, was it just plain sailing for you because you knew everybody? Yeah, and, plain uh, sailing, you know, you, you just take it on the chin, you dealt the hand, you play the hand, don't you? And you do, do your best while you're in jail, treat people with respect. So my old school rules, man. Nowadays we got Gunner, 6 9 It is not happening that way no more. If they want it, they can have it, and it, it's like that. But no one wants it, you don't really want it because you want to get out. But you've just got to show yourself as somebody who's not bothered and Allegedly. let's have it then. What about run-ins with the guards? Yeah, I've always got on with them, to be fair. There's a, there's a, I've had a few run-ins. I've had a few run-ins with them, but especially on the special units. But in, in them sea cats and that, as a young kid, you, you get on with them all because they, they all want to smoke you off. So the run-ins were later on? Later on, yeah. 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 What was the next sentence then? After the three would have been... What did I care? About 27 months or something for another daft ABH punching someone in the eye socket in a club. I was always pissed up hitting people. The way he described it, like punching somebody in the eye socket, not just the eye, the whole socket is what you did it to? Like, that's different. <laughs> people. Mm. Not bullying, but in my head, there's it a reason. Mano or mano, it wasn't, yeah. It's all... You know, and, and you know, because I, 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 I've always had medication for schizophrenia and all that sort of stuff, mm. so. In my head, I think I'm right, and, and it's these come first, and I'll, I'll unload a few of them, and then after, when you realise, you know, say, I'll come here, mate, and then before you know it, you're getting led away <laughs> in cuffs. <laughs> uh, looks like my mate Wild Woman, she, she's got like a, a tumour on part of her brain, and she goes from zero to fucking psychotic within That's so that. many seconds. Yeah, I know. That. I know. Yeah. You can do that, it's yeah. easy. It's yeah. easy, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Low key, when I was young, bro, I used to be like that. Any little slight thing would set me off, and I'd get busy and think about it later, you know? Like, and I don't glorify, I condone, sensationalize any of that. Matter of fact, before it gets critical, here we go. Uh, but that was just the mentality. I don't know what I don't know what type of time I was on, man. And then when you add get, 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 get to the equation. Like, I didn't have liquid courage. I had courage before any liquor, any liquid came in. And, like, I was, I was never an angry, like, I would never get angry. I would see something being done to myself, like, see somebody getting out of pocket, rationalize what was about to happen, come to a conclusion, and execute. And then later, like, afterwards, then I'd get mad. It's not good to, you know, throw these mugs when you're angry, so. But nevertheless, like, I'm in a peaceful zen place now. I got a daughter. Yesterday was her birthday. Um, and, you know, we just, we good. Peaceful. God did. <laughs> so you got, a, you got a string of these offenses then. Yeah. And then, and then what led up to the bigger one? That, what, which one, the eight and a half one? Yeah. Um, I had a massive, I had a massive conspiracy to uh, supply in England and Wales with amphetamine, heroin, and cocaine, but never dealt in class A's. It was only an amphetamine I dealt. I'm not minimising it. It's drugs. It, you know, it's bang out of order. But I was dealing in amphetamine, earning good money. I was earning about eighteen grand a week off it. So I was having proper good dough out of it. But then when we all got bust, what they done? We had a special branch and MI five on us, right? Because we was getting that that big all over the country. But with, with all the other lads doing what they're doing and everything. So they burgled my workers, they burgled their asses and stole all the jewellery and that. But why there was... In is, is Sean, is he from Liverpool? Because I heard him talk about Liverpool earlier. You know, they put cameras in the televisions. So there's, there's videos of them with the missus on the settee and, and you know, the, the private, private videos. <laughs> And there's, lo there's loads of them. And, and they're there talking, saying, oh, yeah, Dave said to this and Dave said to this and... It brings you on a conspiracy, doesn't it? And then they bugged my car, had the headrest bust, the stereo bu uh, bugged. There was all bugged. How did you notice the stereo was bugged? Well, I was on my way to York one day, uh, and um, the person with me, I'll say, right, said, look, that's a different stereo, Dave. That, that's got a big scratching. Yours had a big scratching. This is brand new. I said, no, it's not. It's, it's my stereo. It's my CD. He said, no, look, it's gone. So I pulled over on the lay-by on the A1, ripped it out, and launched it. And I thought, I'm going to sell this car when I get back. I went like, shush. But by, by that time, the damage had already been done because my pals had been sat there, my mate Doggy saying, 22 years I've been deal dealing drugs, mate, and he got a five year for that, it, it, just for the car being bugged. It falls. 
Just that Foolish. one admission. Got yeah, one admission. Years. Yeah, got him. They took out the whole radio and replaced it. To throw that bug in there, that's different. Five years. And it, it, it locked me up. I had the kids working for me. They was all bugged. And when they got raided, I got raided. I got arrested in a bistro in, in, Bull, in a place called Bullwell by my own police. I sat there with my friend who, who's passed away now. It's crazy. A bistro. We call it a bistro. Like the little pronunciations, the little different, the, the little different, the different, the different, the, the differential, the different, the dim, differentiations. And they come in, guns drawn, you're under arrest, David. I thought it was for them, M charges, but it weren't. And they come in and nick me for drugs. I, I, I said, what are you on about, mate? Anyway, they, they did have a lot, mate. So I was, I was cateed for nine kilo of amphetamine. Went to Wakefield Prison, I had two nights there, then five in the morning, whisked off to Manchester, to Strange Ways on the E-Wing there, the Cate unit. Strange Ways. So I was there for about two and a half months, then I got nicked for the murders. They took me to Louth Police Station, um, in armed escort, helicopter and all that, all armed police. Then they brought me back and I realised I was Irish Cate. And then obviously, I'm there now, I'm Irish Cate, so let's crack on with it, there's a big fight on. And so you've got to roll your sleeves up and get ready for it. So you've covered a lot of ground there. Let's go back a bit. <laughs> um, so you had two days in Monster Mansion. Yeah, yeah, on B-Wing. Oh, he was in Monster Mansion too? What was that like? Great. No nonsense on B-Wing. There is yeah. on B-Wing, but on uh, uh, Wakefield Remand units. Too. No, I've done reactions to all of these prisons. Um, I had to remove them off YouTube, like I said earlier. If y'all look, if y'all want to look them up, they're over on Facebook. Specifically for Cat A prisoners and... Obviously, there's a lot of lads who will watch this who know about it, who's been there. You know, so it's the last 18 cells on the landing. There's all, there's, there was bars there at the time, but they had all these nonces there in wheelchairs and that. And you used to go in the shower. I was in with, with uh, Jammer, Shaw, you know, the Bradford cop killers for the travel agent ones. I was locked up with them. So as we're in the showers one day, I've seen this little nonce in his wheelchair with his leg going, knee going up and down, fucking put, scratching his balls and that, watching us in the shower. So I says to Jammer, go and boil the kettle, mate, and put some sugar in it. So he's gone and bought it, he bought it back in the shower. I says, come here, mate, bollock all well, I says, come here, I fucked him straight in his face. So he's going round in his chair, he bent to fuck. I thought, you dirty bastard. He was wanking. 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 Just, playing with his cock, watching men in the showers. I, I scolded him. Wow. But after that, it all got sealed off. They put thick plastic up all around the wing because they knew we weren't having that. Yeah. You know, and they, why, would a, why were those type of prisoners next to cat, category A prisoners? Of course that's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it's not... That's, that's, that don't even make sense. It was all there, all, all the Sydney Coke. He married a, a 21 year old Scars fella there and they married him in the jail. Just pure homosexuality in there. Was this before, or this after, was after Paul Sykes or so? Yeah, Sy Sykes had died by then. Sykes had died, died by, by then. Died by then, yeah, yeah. Sykes had good stuff. I was in full sun with his son. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Didn't oh, he get life off in the Yeah, he, I think so. he got life off in the end, yeah, but he got yeah. the, 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 the the coloured people in there served him up in the showers, cut him up. Yeah, served him up. But good kid he was. What what was um what was he like then? He was side safe. Like his son. Yeah, he was great. He was hard, hard yeah. fucker. Could have was a go, he? mate. Hey, could swing his face. Yeah. He was a unit. Yeah. You know. But you know in in them in I've seen his son, yeah. It's built just like his dad. <laughs> in places. everybody who who's been in them will know exactly what I'm saying. The they're par paranoid breeders. Like in the morning, you'll see them coming out screw faced, and they'll say morning. And if you don't say morning back at dinner, it's going to be on you because they think you've got a vengeance with them. So they'll come and knife you in the back of the neck. That's how they was. There's two or three a week in there oh, on, on every unit. Yeah, drive me. Oh, two murders in there while I was there. I was in there with a kid called Damien from Northampton. Yeah. Right. And he, he says, Dave, I'm going on the numbers. I'm going to do a nonce. I said, Leave it, Damo. Right. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to say his last name. I can tell you yeah, his last name. Yeah. But anyway, he's gone on the numbers. He's, he's killed a nonce called Hatch, got him up, choked him out, stabbed him. And when the screws have gone to the door, he's barricaded up. And they says to him, under the door, Hatch. And he had his hand behind his head saying, can't do it. <laughs> like nodding his head and, and like talking without his mouth moving. So in the end, they forced entry and the fella's dead. Wow. Yeah, killed him. But he said he, he, just, he just wanted the notoriety he did. Yeah. But lo lovely kid. He's only doing a seven or something. I'll for some stripes. Right. For some stripes. But then he got, I think he got 25 for it. 25 yeah. L plates. Yeah. yeah. It comes away life for some people, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're the one that, some people like the notoriety, don't they? Yeah. But, but you know, in, in jail, 
you get the notoriety for a week, then you forgot about it. Somebody else has it. And then the thing is, if you're the toughest, someone else wants to make their name. Someone else will make a name off you, and, and, and is, as life goes on and carries on, you're getting older and older and older. So people think I'll have a pop at this cunt, and yeah. you know, and they always do it. That's that's life. I've done it myself. Yeah, I'll snore this fella, and you just, <laughs> just knock him out. And obviously, yeah. <laughs> ah, I ain't never heard that. I'll snore at this fella. Hey man, I got into it with old boy down the street. I snored him. Snored him. I'm YouTube. I'm just using it in a sentence. That was not true. What just what I just said. I'm just using it in a sentence. Seeing how it'll work with my little lingo. I do not condone sensationalize or anything. I'm here on behalf of the media learning. Time. So you've got to be ready for it. Yes, yeah, so on our recent tour of the North, a lot of people were telling us stories about Lee Duffy and Paul Sykes. Duffy, yeah, yeah, Duffy. Did you hear anything about I, Duffy? Yeah, I knew a lot about Duffy through, through the Newcastle lads, because Sunderland lad, weren't he? Yeah. But, but hard as fucking nails. South Bank. Yeah, hard as nails. Yeah. Yeah, all the Sunderland lads loved him, still talk about him to this day. I think there's going to be a movie or something about him. Yeah, there wants to be as well. Yeah. Hard as nails, mate, that fella was. And there's a book about him, isn't there? A book about him and Viv Graham. Because Viv Graham... Fight was to a, the death? Yeah, Viv well, Graham Well, I got in prison. He gave me that book. you got to read got to this. read it. I should be writing these down, these, all these names. Mate, brilliant book. Yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah. brilliant book. But, you know, in them days, there's no TVs in the, in the jail. So you just sat there engulfed in books and reading and that. And but when, I, when I read that one... It, That's why y'all were so smart back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was reading books. Y'all was locked up reading books. Nowadays, an H&P Suzanne, whatever, H&P Chicken Shop, they in there eating Domino's, playing PS5. You know what I'm saying? Man, it's different. <laughs> Vic Graham rated him, proper rated him, but some wanker shot him near his Cosworth, didn't they, and done yeah. it? Yeah. Wanker. And they got Duffy as well, didn't they? Yeah, got Duffy. He got, yeah. got M'd. Yeah. Yeah. Bless him. But he could have a go in. He was only a young kid as well. We could throw his weight about, mate. He didn't give two fucks, did he? All oh, the bouncers would just lock the doors, wouldn't yeah, they? Lock the, they yeah, they won't tell him he couldn't come in, just bolt off. Yeah. Bolt them all off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're interested, if you're watching this, um, we have done the audio books, the Duffy audio books, Hole of the Moon. There's a whole series of them on uh, Amazon if you want to, viewers want to listen to them. For some reason, if you've never watched Sean, like myself, his the, the link to this original visuals. Vi I edit that out. <laughs> the link to this original video is down below in the description, man. Check it out. So, oh, so hopefully we'll get your book out at some oh, point. Oh, so, mate. Well. Yeah, we're yeah. a good book. <laughs> All right, so two days in Monster Mansion. What was the next one? The next one was Manchester. I went on E Wing there. I was there about two and a half months. Got arrested for the murders. So that's came back. Strange Ways. Is strange it? Ways. What yeah. year was this then? This was in 2005. Because we've interviewed loads of people who've been in Strange Ways. I was in yeah. high school. Yeah. Strange Ways went to Bad Joe, you know. You know, but that, the mans aren't bad people, are they? Mansion in mean, Nottingham, what's that like? He went from Monster Mansion to Strange Ways. Mansion in Liverpool, there's I mean, a lot strange of strange beef ways. always has been because of the football and that. But I've gone there and I've, I've turned up about half seven in the morning because I've gone from Wakefield Street there, no court case row. Yeah. So as I've, got, I've got all my Stone Island on and everything. I've gone bowling down the stairs Stone with my blanket <laughs> and they're all like, that's saying, who's this cunt? Because you know me, you've got to have paperwork, showing paperwork. Yeah. So I got talking to a scarce fella, uh, uh, well, two of them, two brothers, Porky and Willie, become really good pals of mine. Right, and they, they, they've said, who are you, mate? So I've told him, he says, hang on, I made a phone call. And he said, yeah, yeah, good as gold. Good as, this lad's good as gold. And I was in for drugs and all that. Cause obviously, they phoned somebody who's in the know from Liverpool and knows us in Nottingham. Yeah. So we got, I got accepted then without paperwork and that. And then I, I just cracked on then. But made a, made, a, made the right meal of it and got knuckled down. There's some good lads there. Made some proper good pals. Did you have to have a cell mate? In, in, when, you, when you're just standard cat A on that unit, they like to put you in, in a cell with someone. I, and I went in with another, because I'm diabetic, I went in a, a cell with a kid called Stuart Granger. So, right, absolute brilliant kid, he's doing life and that, but uh, fantastic kid. And he's about to do art now as well. So, proper brilliant kid, fantastic kid. Kid called Stuart Granger. So, right, absolute brilliant kid, he's doing life. And he's doing life. And that, but, uh, fantastic kid. And he's about to do art now as well. He's about to do out? So wait, is he doing life or not? <laughs> so, proper brilliant kid, love him to bits, with proper good close pals, and I next bumped into him in full Sutton when, when I was doing the tours of the top securities, and um, made a fuss of me. And when
when you get somewhere, Sean, they, they, um, they take all your stuff off you and you don't get it for two or three weeks. Mm. So you hit the wing with nothing and then obviously people know you because people have heard of you and then people who know you as well and they come and they bring bags of theirs, food, you're on a meal tonight, Dave, because you cook all your own food in them, got your steak and chips and that tonight. Are you okay for it? I said, yes, mate, sand. You know, and, and just, just live. That's what you've got to do. I went up to 21 stone. Come out of 21 stone, I did. Massive. But no training, just eating, fat, fat as they come. So, so you said you was a diabetic? Was yeah, you? Di One stone is 15 pounds, right? 15 times 21 is... Hey Siri! Huh? What's 15 times 21? 15 times 21 is 315. About, off the top of my head, 15 times 21 is about 315 or something like that. 300. Give it take something like that. That's massive. Diabetic, been diabetic so, for 34 years. So at that point then in your life, had you had that coma situation? Or yeah, I, no, I had the coma in 2000, yeah, 2004, I'd had it, yeah. Well, let's go back to that then. What yeah. what, what happened around that? Well, I, 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 yeah, Sean is from Liverpool, I hear it. So let's go back to that then, lad. What's going on with you, Sean? Honorary scouts are here, man. You know what I'm saying? Please don't block my video. I, I, you know, I was a heavy drinker in them days and I'd, I'd gone on the session. I was having ale, not food, and I've gone to bed one night and my brother and I had to break in in the morning because I'm, I'm unresponsive. So they broke in, they booted the door off, they've come upstairs and um, I've, got, I've got up swinging. So he's knocked me out, he's put one on my chin and knocked me clean out, phoned an ambulance carried me to the, in the back of the ambulance and then followed it in, in his Range Rover, got to the hospital, I was, and, you know, I, still, I was asleep for six days, not because of the punch, because of my blood sugars went below two millimoles mm. and I, I went in a coma. Had you had a coma before that? No, that's the first one I had. That's the first one. Yes, but I, I didn't know I was in it and when I woke up, right, um, I've, I've come round to that, I didn't know where I was and I, I didn't know who was who. <laughs> All I could remember is my mum and Colin didn't know. Something. One of my best friends, man, he got diabetes, he was real, he was about... He was about 20, 21 stone as well. Um, he got diabetes, and he lost weight, and he was real, real skinny. Not real skinny. He was like, like the size he was supposed to be, and then he started taking his medicines. But before he started taking his medicine, he would go out, turn up all the time, and not take them, and his foot started tingling. And you know in Chicago, we think everything is a joke. <laughs> so one day we was talking about each other, like joking around, and I was like, okay, Sugarfoot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, hey, that's, that's it. I right. Didn't know my wife, Sandy. Didn't know my children. Didn't know nobody. Horrendous. So how long is the rehabilitation from that, getting your memory back? Well, it's still in fully back now, and that was 2006. No, no, I mean, short-term memory is, is crap. Long-term, I can remember years ago, but short-term, like, what we've said up there, I don't remember. So I have to write things down. So when you got oh, wow. home from the hospital, I always wondered how short-term, long-term memory loss worked. Is it just me, or like, okay, if you if you don't have if you have trouble with your short-term memory, and I say something to you right now and you don't remember it, will you remember it like, <laughs> will you remember it six months later or something? Because you, the long-term memory, cool. That was six months ago I said it. You didn't remember it on the spot, but it's it's a minute ago now. Did it come back? Like, what's going on? I always had that question. Are you thinking, where am I going with these yeah, people? Who's this in the car with me? I didn't oh, know. And then I, and then I ended up walking around, dead confused. I thought, I'll go for a walk, because I like a walk. I used to have one of those daft koshers up my sleeve with gas in. People yeah. say, oh, Dave, shh, who are you? Gas them and put it back up my sleeve. Yeah. Like a fucking lunatic. Didn't know what I was doing. Proper Ed had gone. But slowly but surely, it, it, it was coming back and I could remember things. You just click one morning, you think, ah, oh, this happened. And then you say to your missus, you know, can I remember this? They say, yeah, that happened, Dave. And all that, but it's, it's mad. Because like, you got an interesting legal situation, didn't you, whereby, because of your memory, it was part of your defence. Part of my defence, yeah. yeah. To talk about that one. Yeah, yeah, Sam, mate. What, yeah. what, what was the crime? The crime was I had uh, two murders. To, I had a double murder charge for a thing in Skegness, but totally innocent, like, like every one of us was. But the way the way they did it and how deceitful they was and how they done it, you know, they ended up convicting three people. They got convicted 10 to 2. I, I was acquitted 12 to none. You know, everyone believed me. But I believe on murder trials and things like that, if you're not willing to take the stand 
and tell them what's happened and what's happened with you and everything. Who's gonna... Then they're, they're going to presume that you're guilty. You believe what your barrister's saying. You've, you've, got, you've got to talk about it. You've got to be open and honest That's... and talk about it. That's what you have to do, mate. So I, I did all that. I was in the dock for four days under constant attack, but I swallowed it and I answered every question because I weren't, I weren't lying, you see. I was telling the, the fucking God's honest truth. And I, in the end, I was acquitted, but I was still on remand for the drugs charge. I had, not, I had nine kilo of amphetamine. And then I ended up getting eight and a half years for that. So the, the media, because I've been reading you're all the key. media, and, and you're going to set some of this straight as well. Yeah. So the media and the videos were saying, um, it, it, they were linking all the murders back to like a tit for tat, going back to Jamie, was it? Yeah, when my, my Jamie, he, um, he was in a bar, where we, we, we was at our phone was at the bar. It's this is your nephew. Here. That's my Julie. It was like your yeah, son, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, like your son. it was my sister's boy, but he was yeah. always with me. I, I proper looked after him. You know, and he, he, I used to get Father's Day cards off him and everything. But what, what, what's happened in the, in the bar, the two fellas are coming, I'm not naming them because they're not worthy mm -hmm. of naming, right? But they Talk about it, David, don't get them no clout. Oh. They've gone in the bar, they've started groping a couple of the birds. So the young lads here, we used to call the young lads the hyenas because when one went in, about 20 of them come in. You know, you just, you just got smashed to fuck. So they didn't realize everyone's there. And once a couple have gone into them, the old bar's gone into them and they've smashed ashtrays and bottles in the faces. So fair play to them, they've gone and got gunned up, they want revenge. So as they've gone in the car, they've phoned Marvin, bless him. Never been in trouble in his life, just as a worker, but they like to pint with a lad. So they phoned him up, I think about 3.30 in the morning. And um, I was in, in Spain at the time, right? So he's gone to pick them up, but the man who's done, done the beating with the ashtrays was a mixed race kid. And I won't name him either, right? But they've seen Marvin as mixed race, pull up in a car, get him in the car and drive out. As he drove out, they've shot him in the head. Mistaken identity. Mistaken identity, totally innocent, mate. Never done a thing wrong in his life. Totally innocent. Marvin who? Mm. Did that Marvin, is he talking about, Mar no, cause that other Marvin was a gangster, nah. He can't be talking about Marvin, the other guy. Y'all know who I'm talking about, Marvin, that got shot in the face. And that happened right in front of Jamie. And and Jamie on sat him. next to him, but we were obviously blood all over him and everything. He went on a downward spiral, mate. And um, yeah, in, no, it, all, that, all them way. silly authors and papers and that saying he was taking cocaine, he was a doorman. He wasn't a doorman and he, he didn't use cocaine. He just, went, he just went very depressed and on a downward spiral. And in the end, pneumonia done him. And, uh, you know, he, I remember him, he was out on the Saturday. He said, I'm going home now, Dave. I don't feel very well, mate. I'm going home. I said, OK, I'll come and pick you up tomorrow. So I rang him the next day. He never answered his phone. I thought, I'll leave him lying in. And then by that time, you're on a session and that's my biggest regret of my life, not going round his ass, you know, to fetch him. And, and then on the Monday morning, I got a phone call saying he died. Oh, shit. Horrible, mate. Horrible. But then cause, because Jamie had died, and then the, the fellas that shot Marvin, right, the onus is then on us because his parents got killed. So they're saying, well, it must have been them. They must have done it, you know. And so they, do, they put all the work into me and Colin. Of course, yeah. But, but there's, there's a lot of people, you know, I'm not going to slaughter. John Sterling, lovely bloke, he was one of my best pals, the man who got killed. So obviously nothing to do with me. I didn't know his wife, didn't know what she was, but I knew her family. You know, but absolutely nothing to do with none of us. It sounds like that one of the shooters was into a lot of stuff. One of the shooters of Jamie's mate, the, the kill Jamie's yeah, mate yeah. was into a lot of stuff because there was um, a news report that said when he got found guilty yeah, through water through the water over the family members of his yeah, victim yeah. it was a, it was a mistaken identity so he shouldn't yeah. be feeling remorse yeah and said I'm a bad man he looked like he had a donut in his head yeah that's what he I said I don't give a I don't give a f I don't give a fuck about anybody that's what he said what kind but, of, what's going on with him well, he, he claims he's a bad man doesn't he you know but is he, is obviously locked up still and person, wrong see? person the, and, and, and drenching the mum and dad. Parents. Yeah, to the parents. Absolute, absolute. So he he hit somebody up, but it was a mistaken identity. Showed no remorse. Didn't even care. He was. It is what it is. That's tough. Nothing different. Terrible, mate. Isn't it? Terrible piece of shit. I've never heard anything so cold in my life. Mm, bad. Yeah, that's cold blooded. Yeah. But no sense, no feeling. That's what they say, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Crash dummy. Crashing out at every cause he can. All right, so all, all that drama was going on then, and you um, you guys, the, the, you got the MI5 on you and everything? Well, MI5 was a special branch, and the only reason I knew at the time, I got nicked, I was, I was going out, I was going, where was I going? 
Tenerife or somewhere like that. And I'd, I used to have a Burberry bag with me doing, and I've gone through, they've snatched it off me, counted it. And I knew you could take 10,000 pound out of the country at that time. And they says, Mr. Gone, where are you going with this 10,000 pound? I said, what the fuck's it got to do with you? Who are you? So we're, we're officers from special branch and that. Right, so anyway, I've, I've swallowed that. I think, yeah, okay. I said, I'm going to spend it. What do you fucking think I'm going to do? And took my bag back and just went, because you could have that in them days. But unbeknown to me, and I didn't find out till 2006 when all the paperwork come through, they sat on the plane at the side of me and they sat on the plane in front of me and they come to Spain with me and everything. So it, it, it was them. But it was good. It was very good. Oh, they was on your bum, man. <laughs> it was excellent, mate. When you go through your police paperwork. Yeah, and you think, it's... fucking hell. <laughs> Where's he come from? I've never seen it. <laughs> that guy was on the next table yeah. over in the Indian restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah him. <laughs> T- taking pictures, you don't even see him. And, you know, that's before the days of the drones and that. But, yeah, yeah it, it was on you. It was good. The photos they had was amazing. God knows how they got them. Yeah. God knows. So there was headlines saying shotting them. Now, we, we've got a lot of American viewers uh, are not familiar with a lot of this term. Yeah. Could you explain what Shottingham, how that came about, that name? Well, Shottingham, because they were, they were saying there was over 20 shootings a month and that. I mean, and, and not just aimed at the... It's like Chirac. The best one, I, I, I get it. Was it was all over, black on black, white on white and everything. There was lots of it. But it was called Shottingham because they're saying the city's not safe. The police, because at the time the police didn't come up Bestwood. We police Bestwood at the time. The police didn't come up, uh, park up, or drive around or anything. We did it. So, Mike, could you expand on that for the viewers? So you, you're saying you policed it. Yeah. What does that actually mean? Meaning, people who say if someone got burgled, they don't phone the police, they phone me and Colin. Our lads will find out who's done it, take them round, weigh them in, get the people to tread on the reds. Uh, and all that, or, or or smash their hands in with. Yeah, that's how it used to be in a lot of hoods in America. Until it got real, like till gang got till till gangs got too political, I guess, or too 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 money hungry. I don't know. It used to be for the people, for the people's protection. At least in Chicago, uh, you know, I'm still not condoning the acts, but I'm just saying that's you know. Obama's and that's the sort of thing that went off in them. Burglaries went down. Went right down. There was no joyriding on the estate because of the children. None of that. And they're playing football on the streets. Anybody who joyride, they, they had the, their legs done. Anybody who stole from acid had their hands done. That, that's what used to happen. So I think the Americans would relate that then to kind of like the mafia, Don Collier. You know? Yeah, it was kind of, but we weren't no mafia or outlier. We are just, just people looking after a zone. And, you know, if someone's burgling your neighbours, let's get the stuff back and, and, and make them feel embarrassed yeah. and beat them. And they're not going to grass you because they're not getting grass themselves. Yeah. So you just used to put them to sleep. So the next um, terminology then that we need to explain to you is, is the Burger Bar Boys. What does that mean? The bur- ah, this, where is he from? That's what cartel... Oh, Nottingham, okay. Burger Bar Boys, I remember them. They had a feud with the Yardies? Or what, what gang, what other gang was it? That was another gang with a crazy name. I did a reaction on it. Burger Bar Boys versus... The Burger Hitsen. Bar Boys, they're, they're, they're the Birmingham lads. They're, they're relative, they're at war with the Johnsons, aren't they? But I know a lot of the Burger Bars and I've got a lot of good friends in the Johnsons. So I don't get involved in the mix. The although Bar. they don't like me for talking to one side from the other, but it's all, all jail things, you know. But yeah, there's some good stuff in them. And it's all started in the rave days, didn't it? Where they were used to, used to go drilling and, and slagging each other off on the mic. And, and that's what started it. Right. Yeah, that's what done it. So, you know, Colin, um, what he's written to us, he's, he said certain things that he wanted to get the record set straight on. And one was, there was an undercover cop who wrote about infiltrating True. the Burger Bar boys. And yeah. Has he written about you guys as well? It, it, it's, he's written books on us just to feather his own nest. No one's ever met him. We, we, in Bestwood, we, we, we call him the crackhead cop. Right, that's what we call him. I'm not going to name him. Anyone who wants to know can, can Google it. Right, but it's, it was a complete out and out drug addict and the closest he got to Nottingham was Mansfield on park benches smoking crack with junkies right he's never infiltrated us because let me be straight here in our day when we were, when we was proper on top of, and giving it out right if, if we come in a bar and say Sean I didn't know you and seen you in that one of our bars would say who the fuck are you who are you here with get gone and get get rid of you and then you'd have them all seething at the mouth all the young um, if you not come here don't if you're not from here don't come here type of time it's normal still, a little bit. Tall, tall, up, redhead. So we're doing. So we're doing. Say, no, you're not fucking doing it. I don't even go nowhere where I'm unfamiliar. I call it this out of bounds. 
Oh, that well, I, when I was in Chicago, if we was going in a different neighborhood, I'd be like, Mm-mm. Out of bounds, not going. <laughs> but that's how it was in them days. There used to be two or three hundred of us in the pubs. Wow. And if you didn't know us, person, what's he doing in there? Who wants to sit in a bar with two hundred youths who were firing and sniffing and smoking and, and, and tooled up? <laughs> You're not going to want to sit there unless you're old Bill. <laughs> so you just get rid of him. I love how this dude talk, man. His lingo is A1, tier, top tier. That's how it was. Yeah. So we didn't have no, there's no way we've ever been infiltrated by the old Bill. Anybody never been infiltrated, and then because of all this, then you, you get you get the wanker authors and, and all that start calling your brother names and that, which unfounded. And I've got all the evidence here off the police. Because in the police paperwork it says, doesn't it, if they infiltrate you or not? So you know right away. Yeah, Maybe straight in away. Mind, in mind they said they couldn't infiltrate us. That's why they authorised yeah. wiretaps. That's why they do it. That's why yeah. they do the buggings. Yeah. Because that comes after the, after if you can't be infiltrated, mm-hmm. they put they put. Tags in your ass and cameras in your ass. Yeah. And the favourite one is where they shoot into your carpet through your letterbox. They fire an arrow into your thing. I had one in my ass for four months. How was that working? Yeah, they fire a, a pin. It's a minute pin, and you a can't track it. And you can't track into it your carpet, into your carpet through your letterbox, letterbox and, and it, it has a hundred meter radius. You can hear every conversation. Was it in my phone? Did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, I've had it all. Hundred meter radius. Hundred meter radius in your ass. So, you, so you're sat there whispering in your in your living room with your door shut. They can hear you. Oh my god! Shagging your missus. They you shagging your missus. So kids who are thinking about getting into the drugs <laughs> lifestyle Don't do it Think you just delete your text <laughs> no And way. they're not going to catch you <laughs> what, what do you say to these oh, kids yeah. who got gangster mate? I say don't do it my mate Get a job, live your life <laughs> Don't end up like me and my brother pal Seriously Because there's no dough in it Because when you get nicked They've just took 1.2 million off me So when you get I second that man in that type of game, money got to be revolving. You really can't spend a lot of money unless you're very, very smart. Just go ahead and get a 9 to 5, man. Well, pick up that camera. Be a YouTuber. You know. Get Nick, they're going to take everything you've got and you're going to come out scratching your knackers thinking, why well, am I going to deny? But you're going to be wanted like Jesse James. You can't do fuck all. So keep away from it. Get a job. And make your mum and dad proud. That's all I say about it. And I, I drill that into my grandchildren. It's got to the point now in America, if you're a teenager in your parents' car and you've got weed in the car, cops seize the car and keep it. Do they? Civil asset forfeiture law. Yeah. I don't know what part of America you're talking about, sir. <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> not. Not maybe in Alaska. No, not even Alabama. Not even. I don't even know. What year was this shot? Huh? What year was this done? Uh, but in most states, marijuana in America, I am in America, I'm in Florida, most, most, most states, weed is legal. If it's not legal recreational, it's legal medicinal, and you can carry up to 28 grams. So, I don't know, girl. Let's go throw that out there. And even if you if, even if you have a small amount, and back when back when it wasn't legal, the cops I don't know in Chicago at least I'm gonna speak on behalf of Chicago. I can't speak nowhere else. They just gonna throw it out or keep it for themselves, allegedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stop it now. So your mum and dad lost the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> your a few week. tickets. <laughs> Fuck it out. So, so there was a few other stories and legends that you guys wanted to address, you and your brother wanted to address. What? There was a journalist, wasn't there? Yeah, there's a, a journalist. We, 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 we call him the cokehead journalist. I'm not going to mention his name. He's not worthy of it. But he's wrote books on us. Complete fabrication. He's labelled my brother a police. <laughs> Y'all yeah, had a crackhead cop, a cokehead journalist. That's tough. Informer, which could entirely put his life at risk Holy. in the prison estate. You know, and then what he's done then... He's fed the information onto other journalists, then it gets it's repetitive, it gets repeated and repeated and repeated. But Colin's got no voice because he's Iris Cate. He's been Iris Cate for 17 and a half years now. So now I've got all the I've got all the information here off the police. You've had a copy, Sean, haven't you? So all the information off the police saying Colin's never been an informant and he's never been paid for information. And at the time of the so the so-called informing, it was 2001 to 2002. He'd been in Spain for two years on the run. For, for some afraid, you know, so you can't possibly be informing, especially on other gangs. That ain't my brother. Anybody who knows me and my brother knows that won't be tolerated. You'd just be, you'd just be gone. Not so, like you, you know, you, I've watched these videos and these journalists or YouTubers or whatever, 
they're just like saying with authority in this year you know colin became a police informer yeah. and that's how he was able to like keep the, you know the, the cops wouldn't investigate him for things you know what and that is man. investigate his competition yeah. Bullshit. And a lot of these look like, channels man they, they just go out here and they just trying to get clicks likes they're trying to they're trying to say whatever makes a cl- get a like and whatever gets views man whatever gets you reshared oh was he let me share this so people know nah man there's no factual, there's no real journalism behind it. There's no real craftsmanship. There's no real respect that they have for their own work. You know what I'm saying? I don't like when when people do that shock that shock journalism that ain't even that's not even true to the game. You know what I'm saying? I I've, I've been doing so many reactions like that that be my opinion, man. I be seeing it. I just be like, I don't know about that. Where state you like demand? Where who said? Where does it say that at? <laughs> this all this all come from the thing that we had we had a pal who, who, who was a manager of the shop Limey's, right? And one day, I mean, I, I don't have nothing to do with old Bill or anything, but one day the the pet fellow who ran it, he rang our call up, says, "Cole, Charlie is joining the old Bill," and he said it would be good for information and that, right? But Colin said, "Well, I'm not interested, mate." But in the end, because you say you're in town. And you, so people would get whacked, would get whacked out, they get grassed up. So you, you'll, fo- you'll, see, you'll phone Jay up and say, Jay, that's Charlie who's grassed here, mate. And then, you know, people going around having a word and all the charges were dropped. You can't do it now. But in them days, that's what used to happen. And, and then it's gone from that to was buying him thousand pound Armani suits and all the bollocks. It never happened. Never happened. I, I don't know if Colin never gave him a drink through Jay. But, you know, in, in, in our firm at the time, we don't pay please. There was an Indian fella there and they used to be into the scooters and my pal had done a shop called Icon Scooters, right? So a couple of the old bill used to come down there, they had an opening party and that. They used to be there and my pal used to say, leave it, Dave, don't say David anything. David Gunn. They're buying scooters off. Does David Gunn have a um, uh, most dangerous man with, um, with, what's his name, Danny Dyer? That's where he might be. That's where I might have seen him at. We used to go to Vietnam, getting all the scooters, doing them all up, Vespers and Lambrettas, and then selling them in his shop. But, you know, there's been no informing and no payments. You know, but I think they all got jail in the end because of Charlie. Jay Grocott got free. I think Charlie Fletcher. So Fletcher's the one that's the, the, the dominant one in the news stories is yeah. that Colin put this guy into the police force yeah nonsense never never met him never met, the never met him and then and then the, 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 the junkie author in his book he's saying that colin was at school with him and, and all that was either the author or, or or the crackhead one was set in his book one of them books colin was at school with him and that colin's a lot older than him you know he went on to school with him. people be saying anything just to make their story connect just to make their story make sense like, I be listening, like, this is in real life, too. I heard, like, this is like habitual liars. People just lie and lie and lie and lie just to make themselves sound right. Even be believing themselves sometimes. It's crazy. No one knew him. Never met him. But it's so one of the other myths, then, that we wanted to dispel. Um, there was a woman, wasn't there, that was saying yeah. things about yeah, Colin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened was, I mean, the fella's doing life now. I won't mention his name, but he's doing life for a murder in Nottingham. He was out with his, with his wife at the time, and her friend was out. So she said she fancied Colin, so he's rang Colin, come out for a drink with us, Cole. This bird fancies you. So Colin's gone out, and he's met this bird, and at the end of the night, they've gone back to an hotel, but she's sat up all night sniffing coke and taking pills. So, so nothing's gone off, and then he's gone on for about another two or three days, and he's, he's, never, he's never done her, but... She's then gone to the police. She's schizophrenic, it's turned out she is, right? But she's gone to the police and they've had her for nine weeks and she's saying to him, yeah, Colin's told me about the murders of the Sterlings. We've had gang meetings in basements with drug dealers. Con- constant bollocks, what she was telling. But anyway, the information was that reliable, she weren't even a witness on the murder charge. You know, it was just total nonsense. And they knew it were total bollocks and they had her nine weeks at it. So, I mean, I don't even know the bird's name, but just disregard everything she says but then you get the author then jumping on it Colin had a pension for teenage girls he, he didn't have a pension for teenage girls he, he went out with a young girl at 19 Colin were 32 I think she were 19 and, and they lived together for a few weeks that was it you know but you, know, you don't make you a sex offender she's 19 for fuck's sake I, I were married at 19 with two kids it's just desperation isn't it? 
a bit yeah, yeah, desperation, but because if you throw enough shit, some's going to stick somewhere. Exactly. Some will stick, and 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 to destroy your your image, you've got to destroy the name. So once yeah. they destroy the name by saying you're a grass, you're this, you shag teenage girls, your myth's gone. You know, and that's how they do it. Yeah, you see it all the time. All the time. As well. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. complete that, wankers, mate. Yeah. That's what they like to do. A lot of that going on right now. So, I, you know, as you're getting towards your longer sentences then, when was Colin actually sent down for his big one? We, we was on trial for the murders. We started, was, I, was on remand, I was on remand in January 05. I went on trial for the murders for four months in, I think it was June. Yeah, June, June the 6th, 06. And then it finished in about October. What was the trial October, like? Yeah, hectic. Hectic. <laughs> lot of security. Lot of security. Every now and again, because we're all Irish cate, you see, so you're, you're strapped up in, co- in suits and with prisoner on the back and everything, helicopters, cars, guns, all, all around the courts, guns are drawn. Anyway, every now and again, they'd rush into the court aiming Mac 10s and all that, and then Eckler and Kosh rifles, and the jury are doing that, ah, just to show it's us that they're there for. You know, that's what they were doing. And the judges stand up, get out of my court. And all that, so the, the me can fuck off out the court, but the damage it's is mental. done. The damage is done. Because every morning, you see, when the jury are coming in, the jury was under under police guard. Yeah. So they couldn't be infiltrated, they're claiming. So as they're pulling into court, we're pulling in at the same time, and all, there's all coppers down the middle of the road like that, dogs on roofs, helicopter over and above, we're on police hanging out. Yeah. And that's so you pull into the gates, and the jury see you, they know it's you. So to make sure they know it's you, they fucking rush the court with guns out. <laughs> so then they think, yeah, this is them. So they are coming in under this armed escort. So does that to imply guilt to the jury? Yeah, it's These to guys imply are so guilt. heavy, we've got to do So tactic is what they thought. Okay. We've got to do all this. 35 grand a day for transport and all that for four months. They spent millions on it. Absolute millions. Just just shake down all the time. Yeah, 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 it? yeah, it's, 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 yeah. It's, just, it's just fucking nonsense. Yeah. Nonsense, mate. So what, what, like, did you get to look at the jury and all that? Yeah, you select them. You, you and your, your QC select them. So okay. I think we had 50 odd and you just picked 12 out of them. But you, you know, you say, you, you, don't, you don't select them, your QCs and the judges select them mm-hmm. and the clerk of the court. But you, you turn around and say, I don't like him. Um, he, look, he looks this or he looks this. Or I know his face mm-hmm. and all that. But we didn't know the faces because it was, it was the middle of Birmingham. <laughs> you know, but you get rid of who you, who you think you, you don't like because some people have that wrong look about them. If they'd have found you guilty. So there's like jury selection. That's, uh, they do that in America too, right? How much time would you got? I'd have, I'd have died in prison. I'd have, when my brother got a 35, I'd have got the same. This podcast is sponsored by Harry's. Harry's is way more than a super sharp razor company. They're here to revamp your whole... Re- Unfortunately, I can't do razor shaves, but salute for you, my boy, for getting your coin. Thank you for supporting Harry's. Link is in the description box below this video. So the, are you saying that they found you not guilty and they found him guilty? Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, no one gave evidence. The three, the three, every, everybody who gave evidence for themselves, right, was acquitted. The three who didn't give evidence, got, got, they got potted. So... I, I've always said you've got to give evidence, but you know th- they'll attack you and throw that much stuff at you. You know you, you, you fuck, you're in serious trouble, and, yeah. and especially people like my brother and that. You just lose your temper. He stood up offering them out when they're mentioning Jamie, you bastards, and and all that. You know he used to lose his temper, bless him. But you have to you have to kind of calm down a bit, don't you, in that scenario? Because you want you want a good standing. You want them to think you, you, you're not a div and you're quite intelligent. I grew my hair, I had curly hair, I had glasses on, I looked like a fucking nonce. But it done me, it done me. He's a sex offender, not a murderer, and all that, and I got acquitted. So. <laughs> One of them in it. <laughs> well, like, take us through oh, the, like, no the bringing the verdict. It's funny. Were you, what was going through? Well, there, was out, there was out for about five weeks, the jury was out, and we thought they'd be out a couple of days, and the quest is all. You sweat every day, you just sit down, then you ring, ring. Caught, caught one, everyone's caught one, you think, oh, verdicts, up you go, 
It's a question. They want a question. So five, five weeks for five that. that bastard. That, yeah. That's torture. Because questions, it was torture, me. <gasps> but I, I, you know me. I, I, I hundred percent knew that I've done nothing wrong, and, yeah. and I've told the truth. So I've got nothing to hide. And my brother and them, they're innocent. But they've been found guilty. So it's an uphill, uphill struggle now. Well, even though but, you knew you were innocent, the court is theatre, isn't it? Yeah, it's theatre. They spent all that money. They put on the best theatre show, yeah. haven't they? And the best actors win it. Yeah. But I, I had a QC called Trevor Burke. It was absolutely outstanding. I had Orlando. No Pownall first, but he had he done the Omar bombing after that, so I got Trevor Burke. So absolute outstanding, brilliant QC, and no prisoners. So that helped your confidence. Yeah, yeah well, it helps your confidence because and you know, you know, you think you clued up on it all, but legal jargon, mm. you, they lose you, they lose you with it all. So you, you're writing things down and giving them notes, and they're saying yeah, yeah, and all that, but really they're thinking fuck off. I've mm. got this. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, man. When they, when they it's a, it's legal. Lawyers and judges speak an entirely different language. <laughs> like, so even if you think you queued up and you know what you're doing, if you ain't really, really, really deep into a book, really, really learning the lingo and how to say things and how to, you know what I'm saying, how to, oh, case da 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 da, da in the past is like, you know what I'm saying? And unless you know how to do that, just let your hope for the best, man. If you got a public service, if you got a public servant or a, 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 a public defender, see you. <laughs> see you when you get out. It's in the bag. And they used to come down after I said, it's in the bag, Dave. Don't worry about it. It's in the bag. So I was quite confident with it until, until the verdict's come in. I thought, fucking hell, here we go. Because yeah. John, John and Tricky were first. They got found guilty. Then, so when they got found guilty, you think, you know, we're all fucked. I thought, fuck me, they got found guilty, we're fucked here. Then Le- Le- um, Linnell, he got found not guilty. Um, McKinnon got found not guilty. Shane Bird, not guilty. Kevon, not guilty. Colin, guilty. Then me, not guilty. So you were last? I was last, yeah. How did it feel when they found your brother guilty? It devastated me, mate. Devastated. Because really, I should have been the happiest man in the world. But I, I was gutted. I, was, I, I, I couldn't be happy. So that's it now. You've got the downer of that. And the upper of and the upper you, of you know you're going to be going clashing, on to, but the clashing and colliding and, and it just imploding because I'm thinking how my mum's going to feel she'll be happy for me but she can't show happiness because of my brother and all that you know how your family's going to feel it, it was a hor- horrible time mate but but you know after after being on remand for two years in the end because of the drug charge and everything and getting found not guilty you don't get an apology you just get looked at like you've got away with it then they take all your dough off you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they do yeah even people who are innocent on death row do not get an apology don't get an apology yeah. no apologies they give you a few quid and jog well, on but I never even got a few quid, quid. <laughs> I never got never got yeah. fuck all like chalk yeah so were you released right away that day no mate no I went downstairs said, I, I thought I'll play this fucker here so I've gone downstairs said not guilty cunt under the gate I'm off let me out the cell said no we're waiting for the warrants to come back Mr Gunn so now I get the fucking door undone my family are out there I want to go Anyway, they come back and say, now you're on remand for a conspiracy, you couldn't, you're fucking staying there. Oh. <laughs> <I've got laughs> <fucked off. laughs> so you had to I stay in for a bit? I, I stay. Hold on, hold on. My bad. Support, not gonna answer this. Right, go back. I'm off. Let me out the cell. I said, no, we're waiting for the warrants to come back, Mr. Gunn. So now I get the fucking door undone. My family are out there. I want to go. Anyway, they come back and say, no, you're on remand for a conspiracy. You're con- You're fucking staying in. Oh. <laughs> I've got the fuck off. <laughs> so you had to I stay said, in for a bit? I, I stayed in for another another two and a half years. Another two and a half years. Yeah, and then I got... That's how they be doing you, man. You beat one case, they check if you got anything else out. They're going to get you for something else. Got released. I was in, I got barred from the old city of Nottingham. I had a big red map where I couldn't enter on the M1. I had to go through Derby to come on a, a next junction and all that to go to, to, go to Ilkeston and all that places. And then um, I got recalled for swearing. I swore in, in a hostel, called someone a fat bastard, one of the women who were there. It took me on the head with a letter saying, you're late, Mr. Gunn, that's your final warning. You broke your curfew. I said, I'm not on a curfew. Curfew is lifted every Tuesday. So I'm like that, pissed up. So I snatched the fucking envelope, threw it in the face, said, fuck off, you fat bastard. I'll see the manager about you in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, five guns in me head. Off you go. Dang. Off you go. Back Cate, went to Woodhill, then straight straight back to Full Sutton. Cate again. So was this- I wouldn't say it was just for swearing, Mr. Gunn, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah. The time that you were serving with your brother. Yeah, insane, yeah, it was insane. on remand, was on remand. Me and my brother was the first remands at Long Law and because at the time at Wakefield, 
right? We're, we're just dead blase. Eh? Thought, thought we're the king of the wing. We're not nonsense. We'll do what we fucking want. We're on remand for two murders. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> you, know, you know, what can you say? Yeah. Anyway, my cell door's gone in one night. I've got the phone up my arse and there's a battery on charge under, under <laughs> me. <laughs> what? We're not going to zoom past that. Yeah. We're fucking one. Well, I'm a man for two murders. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> you know, what can you say? Yeah. Anyway, my cell door's gone in one night. I've got the phone up my arse and there's a battery on charge under, under my fucking my, my big power buster. And it's on charge. They got the, got the battery. They said, where's the phone, Dave? I said, oh, that cunt's left the battery there and blagged it. I've got five days CC. My last day of CC, I've gone on a visit. There's me, our Colin and Charlie Brunson. So I'm on a visit, Charlie made a fuss of each other. We sat there on the visit. And um, they've come to terminate your visit. Wait, what year was the phone up there? Because technology didn't get to where it is till nowadays where they got them. Look, no, never no, mind. You're gone. Straight to reception, gone. Long Lawton. Yeah, first remains there. What was the first time you met Charlie Bronson? Charlie, I met Charlie in 98. It was on E-Wing at Lincoln. It was a special unit at the back of C-Wing. And he come off it and he used to have a medicine ball called Bertha. Fucking brilliant, bro. <laughs> brilliant, bro. He used to do 100 press ups, 100 sit ups, and he won't get banged up until he's done them all on every landing. And then he'd run around the landing dead fast. Absolute fantastic, mate. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. We loved him. Did you see him deck any guards? But yeah, he, he, he swung at a few. You, you, at Wakefield, when was all on the special unit there? You know, you, you have a, there's five yards, and you have me and, me and Colin in one because we co accused him family. And Charlie would be in one, there'd be Sid Sid right in another, and, you know, all going down. And Charlie will start exercising. He'll cover himself in cocoa butter and all that, mm -hmm. sweating up to foot. They'll say, time, time to come in, Charlie. Fuck off, you slag. <laughs> That's what he used to say. And then it was on. He used to come out with a team and, and he'd brawl him. But you can't help him because you're locked in your, in your fucking thing. You can't get out. There's cages between you. You can't get out, mate. But Charlie's game was fucked, mate. I was at full something with him. He was in the seg there. He was sending bits of her. Good stuff. And he's still in hella shape now. Still in hella good shape, yeah. mate. But we had a, they had a, Dave Courtney and them, they had a free Charlie Brunson fight at Colic all years ago. So Charlie, Charlie rang me, right? And he said, Dave, you've let me down. You fucking said you was coming to this free Charlie do. And I said, Charlie, I was there, mate. I sat with your brother and your mother. It was all there. I've got a picture here. I'm going to post it to you today. He says, you fucking what? My brother told me you weren't there. <laughs> so I posted the picture. Then he wrote to me, like, I'm really sorry, Dave. Oh. He said, you was there. Thank you for the picture. And all that. He says, he's a toss of my brother. <laughs> he went mad about it. Bless me. He don't mean it. You know, he's just, just not that he's been made to look, look daft. But I love Charlie. I do. my proper good pal. Do you think he'll get out? Yeah, nah, he was, hey, no, no, wait. Charlie, I said I was there. I was there, sir. Please. <laughs> Don't you oil up and come for me? I hope so. Yeah. But he's got he's got a long a long uphill battle, mate. We've had the playing. Yeah, my mate um, Kerry Danes, who's a forensic psychologist, she's, I've, I've, she's I've, helping him. Yeah, oh, is she? Because I've seen her on yeah. the, on them thin crime channels. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Good. She's good. Yeah, she is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blonde bird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about was it Maudsley? You Maudsley. Yeah. You, what, you, you can you explain to the viewers who who he is? Robert Maudsley, I think he's, I think he, he, he's took the schools off off a couple and the, they said he's at the brains. He's a he's a Welsh kid, but he's never getting out. He's doing a natural life, and he's a he's a proper expert with computers. He gets he, he teaches the staff now through glass. He's a wizard with computers and that. He's just he's just a proper brainy kid, but you don't see much of him, and he won't speak to you, but he'll nod at you as he's walking past because on them units you're on single unlock. So when you, he's in a cage, Maudsley, he's a glass cage. So you walk by and say, how are you, Matt, Rob, you all right? He says, hmm. And just nod at you, you know, if he, if he got near, he'd want to kill you, wouldn't he? Because, not that you're nonsense, but he just want to kill you, don't want, he wants to kill everybody. But Charlie didn't like him, Charlie hated him. <laughs> how did that manifest? I don't know, it's just for other years of being on, in them, I think it's because he's a weirdo and that, and Charlie's into fitness and that, he just mm. wants to lie on his bed and walk up and down his cell. Yeah, a few of our guests have said they saw Morsley and they described it as like a Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal box. Lecter, yeah, in the glass. Yeah. That's what, he's in. what was his name? Charlie Mosley. Wait, what was Mosley? I gotta look that up. That's that seems like an interesting character. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I know who uh, Charles Brunson is. We did reactions on him. Uh, but I ain't never heard of this guy. On the SSU at Wakefield. Yeah. Downstairs. Somebody put some of these names in the comments, man. Because I'm I got I'm trying to listen. I can't write at the same time. I'm getting text messages. You can remember, I've been here for two hours now. This is a two-hour reaction. Give me a break, please. Because <laughs> didn't he, like, 
Was it his cell mate? Or he got a couple of them in his cell and he did yeah, that, he, did he, that he, to he, he spooned the brain. They said he had the brain, whether he did or not. He didn't. He denied doing that. But mm. but he, he, he killed him. In them days, he had them, them fucking silver trays with the three compartments on. And he's chopped the, the top of the heads off with the side of the tray yeah. and dug the heads out, dug the brain out. And then he goes to the garden and said, there's going to be one yeah. less for count. Yeah, two, two. two off tonight, love. <laughs> two off tonight. Jesus. <laughs> but the, the time before that was when he went to Broadmoor and, and it was one off then. So I think he's done three. Yeah. But, you know, obviously in jail, things get added on and that. And that, because I've never... Come on, man, that got to be a fabricated story. What do you mean he did what to the top of his what? And did what with the inside of it? I really spoke to him about it. Because I love... I love Love to talk to people about things like that. Mm. Michael Stone, he, I've, I've been saying he's innocent for decades, right? And he is innocent. He is innocent, mate. Another innocent guy, and we had him on the channel, was Kevin Lane. Kev Lane's my good pal. Yeah. Yeah, I love Kev Lane. Catwalk Kev. Catwalk Kev. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant kid. Yeah. Proper, proper good kid. Fittest man in the system. Mm. And uh, Liam, Liam Art Lane, they used to call him. Because he used to just flatten them. <laughs> Fittest man in the system, mate. No one fought with Kev. What prison did you meet him in? I was in, I think I was in Long Larton with him to start with. And then years later, I bumped, in, bumped into him in Franklin. I was on F Wing and I think he was on E Wing. And we, we used to go to the gym because he had the record for rowing, did record he? for everything. Fittest man in the whole system, Kev. Wow. Lane. Super fit. Yeah. Super fit. Proper, proper good kid. I, and I love it. When I seen him on, on your podcast, because I had a look mm. and I seen him, I thought, oh, he's out, mate. Thank God for that. Because it was a long slog for him. Did he call him for a bit? Isn't he back out again now? Yeah, he's out now. Yeah. yeah. I know he got yeah. recalled for about nine months, didn't he? Yeah. But he's out now, bless him. But you know, I know people who know him. I always, I always mm. ask questions because he, he was dating that was it Kerry Katona or someone. He was in the in the paper, whether mm. he was or not. Mm. Saying he was dating Kerry Katona at one stage. So go on, Kev, good lad. <laughs> <laughs> so did you say you had history with Dave Courtney then? Yeah, Courtney. Well, I met he, Courtney. He was one of our first podcast guests. Yeah, Courtney's all right. Did. Also interested in doing Sean Atwoods because you know how you want to have like I want to see. I know he got one documentary somewhere. Oh, he's been on somebody's back. Uh, I'm going to check it out. This slaughter him. The, the cotton isn't that slaughter him. I'm, I'm fond of me. I like Dave Adu, but I was in Marbella with him years ago. And, and you know, we had a proper se- a proper session with him and all his entries. But 100 degree, and they've all got suits on him and fucking hats and everything. I can't believe it. And I'm sweating for him. So, <laughs> but Dave was good stuff, mate. And on the plane back, the, the funniest thing I, I've ever heard, he's come down the plane. It was with the MC at the time. I think, I think Julia was it or something. The name was a black lady. But it's come down the plane saying, "Oh, he got it. Ease, ecstasy. What you got?" And all that. I thought, "Fucking hell, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm wanted like Jesse James as it is." <laughs> <laughs> and it's just fucking uttered me right up, bless him. And then, then later, I was in, I was in Wood Hill again with Manny Clark, the boxer, from that way. And he was mates with Courtney. And Manny's, Manny's my good pal. So he, I used to say to him, "Kiss Courtney's address, mate," and I started writing to Courtney, writing back to me to say, "Can you remember this in Marbella and all that?" And he could remember me, bless him. And when we had the ch- free Charlie fight, made a fuss of each other there, you know, because he obviously remembered me, and I'll never forget him because I, I, one of the first books I read when I was in Moorlands as a younger one was "Stop the Boss." <laughs> that was one of the first ones I read because I was, you know, tellies in them days, just reading. Yeah, yeah. I but, sent Wildman that book when he was uh, "Stop the Boss." I want to get yeah, off. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Not a bad book, bless him. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's fucking hilarious, Dave. Well, it's funny as fuck. If, if people want to go back and watch, it's in the first ten podcasts we ever did. We were at his house. And- Sean, you do a really good job of making people feel at home on your podcast. I swear, like it just, it just seems like two good friends having a conversation, and y'all might be good friends. That's maybe why he feels so able to talk openly like this, or you know, he's talking about cases that have already been. Signed, sealed, and delivered, but still, like, this is a good podcast, man. And it's like homely, it's just, it's not overdone, it's not over the top, it's just a couch. It's just, I feel like you do your podcast wherever you at. <laughs> it's, let's set up the camera and let's go. One camera, one mic on top of the camera, straight through. <laughs> and uh, we'd love to do a part two with him as well, so <laughs> we're just gonna try and arrange that. Yeah, yeah. So, have you got any stories from Spain? Other stories from Spain? Yeah. Hmm. I've had a few good stories in Spain. I lived there for five years. Okay. I had a few doing all the all the tobacco and all that. And, and were you on the run out there? Yeah, I was on the run out yeah. there, mate. Yeah. 
but you still had a villa there when when Colin was on the run he was in my villa and then I was but I was out there and coming back I had, a, I had a, my friend who is obviously sadly died now but in them days you could go to the post office with the ID and get a year's passport mm. so you still get a year's passport <laughs> come back on it get another one and go back yeah. and, and, and do all that but Spain was great mate we used to we used to go through the Pyrenees with, with the fags so you'd pay the gypsies to take you through mm. on your lorries and that it was a good, good time I loved it what that. about the police out there? They don't mess around. Oh, they want the civil guardian. Guard of civil. Yeah, you know, I remember yeah. one time, like the lads have come out to see me, and you know they're all potheads and that. So we're, we're on the strip. One of us built a spliff at the bar. He's can't do that in air chopper. He said, "I'm Chopper Davis. I do what the fuck I want." So anyway, he's lit it up at the bar. So the guard of civil snatched it out of his mouth. He's uppercutted him. Can that bang the copper saw for fuck's sake, chopper? So guns was out and it's gone off. The wrestling, they've gone and never seen him again for two weeks. Yeah. Never seen him, but they never got him. They just did because they knew yeah. it was like it was fucking on top. Wow, on top to fuck me. I said you should never have done that, mate. Because oh. they remember you, you know. Yeah, they remember you and fill you in. They take you in in Benidorm. They have a white cross on the mountain, and that's where they Benidorm. That's funny. Take you there, and Amia. Did you end up in a nick in Spain? No, mate, not me. No, no. clean, clean living. Yeah. <laughs> Used to do a few, a few. Never get in trouble somewhere that's not <laughs> your homeland. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I come to the, when I, not if, when I come to the UK, I'm the model citizen. I am, hey, how are you? Shaking hands. Yes, please stop all the way at the stop sign. Look both ways, you feel me? Like, I'm not getting in trouble in foreign land. A few bits and bobs for people just to get a few quid, you know, but <laughs> you have to, you know, serve a few up and that who's been faced it. But get a few quid out of it to keep you going. Yeah. You know, while you're waiting for your dough to come in and that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to, you've got to graft, haven't you? So, How did you been on the run end? To come back. Okay. Come back, but in them days, what I'd done, I'd, I'd, um, I'd, shot, I'd shot at a DJ, pissed up, shot at a DJ playing the wrong tune, and in my younger days, so I've had to fuck off. What it, tune was it? It's a, some Elvis tune or something like that, but we want to know the rave tunes in the, in the bar. <laughs> Bro was not feeling Elvis, he was trying to rave out. <laughs> Blick something for Elvis. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Shot the fucking disc DJ equipment. Not the DJ, the yeah. DJ equipment. Yeah. All bailed out, laughing his heads off. I fucked off straight away the next morning and all the doors are going in and I'm, I'm in Spain. <laughs> Get love me tender off. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes on oh, oh, seven right, days yeah. in one week. <laughs> yeah, great times, great times. But obviously, all the lads lived out there. We had a good time. Yeah, good yeah. time out there, mate. Enjoyed it. So going through the prison system, now for you know you've done twenty plus years. Mm. Who would you say is the most dangerous people you've ever met? Mm. Well, in 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 normal prisons, anywhere uh, of your life. Dangerous people. There's a lot of there's a lot of serious dangerous people. Yeah. There's a real, real lot of serious dangerous people, mate. But then there's people who just don't take no shit and don't give two fucks who aren't dangerous but will turn dangerous. So best best thing to do in jail is just be, be friendly with everybody, mate. That's best thing to do is just not go. So you can't be. Don't bully. Don't need to bully. Earn a few quid if you get a few bits. Sit, be right with them, and everyone wants everything, don't they? So and you you just live your life and fill your freezer. Be respectful. We've got to be respectful. Polite. And polite, yeah. and don't look down your nose at people because you know yeah. better than anybody else because you're all cons. Don't matter if you've got a million and a half quid outside, you're spending 25 quid a week in there. Yeah. So it don't matter how much you fucking got, you're all the same. What do you think about this new generation of armed robbers and dealers yeah. who come in now and they're getting life off and they're like, the teenagers really, and yeah. they're just fast to shoot people. Just, and... They're fast for it now, aren't they? I mean, yeah. I mean in, in our phone, they was fast doing it, but not this fast. Yeah, it, it's just right now. All the young ones in Nottingham now—they all walk around with them, and you, you've got to be careful who you look at, who you talk to, you know, because it only takes one pull. And you, I mean, you can be fast, but you're not going to stop a nine mil or a thirty-eight. Oh yeah, so not when, stop it. You know, because your family has got a name, and people, young people, think right. That's the old generation. We can make our name off that generation. Do you, have you ever experienced any situations um, like that? Pe people have come up to you and say, look, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but like drugs and things. And I'll, I'll educate them. I'll say, look, do it this way, mate, because I did it that way and I got nicked. And, and they look at you too and they do this, look, like, what a div, you don't know what he's on about. Yeah. But you do, because you've fucking lived through it and done it or had yeah. millions of quid out of it. You know, but... So do you think there's no getting through to someone? I think that's human nature, though. That's human nature in general, man. That ain't just no, no, you know what I'm saying, hustlers, ambition. That's that's just human nature. People don't want to listen to people. 
even if they've been through what they've been through, they want to walk their own path instead of taking advice. Which is, you know, now that I'm older, a little older, I'm like, that's stupid. <laughs> I should have listened. If I would have listened to a lot of things that was said to me, I'd be so much further. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. I'm good. But, like, I'm, I'd be way further. What is your no, they, they, they're blase, hey, mate. They're on a the one-track mind. They just want, want, they want wealth and they want it fast. And, and in the course of the wealth, if people knock them and don't pay them, they'll wig them. Why do you think it's become so deadly? I don't know, mate. I don't, I, cause it weren't like that in our day. But then in our day, there weren't many guns about, but they're prevalent now, mate. They're everywhere. They're, they're reboring them. You know, starter pistols again, reborn and filled in at the top. But they, 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 I, I don't know. People say it's a rap scene, it's a drill scene and all that, but it's not. It's the people themselves, you know. Yeah. You obviously want to do it, or you wouldn't do it. You can say, I listen to that and... and I'm going with the flow, yeah. but you don't have to carry a gun. Don't have to, mate. Or a knife. Knives are worse than guns for me. Can't stand blades. Yeah, interesting. So did you ever get attacked at all throughout your incarceration? Anyone no, never. No, no, never, mate. No. Did you see some heinous violence? Oh yeah, yeah. What, what, what I, kind of stuff? Have I, you seen? I, I've, I've seen slashings where they've had 380 from the neck to the waist when he was going off with the Muslims and that. From the neck to the waist. I've seen slashings where they've had 380 from the neck to the waist when he was going off with the Muslims wow. and that. It was going off bad. So, slow, slow down on that one. And, um, what do you mean he, he was going off with the Muslims? Full certain, right. There, there was, say, say, obviously you get your white lads and you, you get your mixed race lads. A lot of them are Muslim. I'm and like, some Muslims and uh, the, the, the Asians are Muslims predominantly. But lovely kids. But, but you, have, you have a Muslim ruler on each wing at full sun and one's an overall ruler and he was on a wing i mean a london kid i won't mention his name but he was an overall ruler of them so if he put a knit on you there'd be 40 of them waiting for you near the gym and you're going running up like we used to go up in a gang of 40 and 50 all to the gym on his own or the whites right but when sometimes one of the lads would run up front and they were waiting to jump out slash you to foot face back the lot even though even though heinous out, outrageous you know because you probably said something wrong to him so what had this person done they got the 300 well i think i think he he, ch he chimmed one of them and then what they used to do then on the wings now the windows up and that big so you everyone made shanks you file them all down off the ironing board le legs and things like that off the off the light fittings snap them off file them all down and flick them out the window so they go in the grass so as you go out you pick your tool up put it down your waist and that's how it was people getting stabbed it was regular everyday st stabbing slashings hot water and sugar the napalm, you know, all that nonsense. Regular thing with, with Muslims and whites. But because I had, I had friends as Muslims, and I, and I had, obviously, my friends are white as well, but a lot, of the, a lot of the Johnson crew was the Muslims, and there was my good close pals, we was all on romance together at Woodhill, and had double murder trials together and all that, all in the same crown courts. So they used to say, no, nah, man, you, no, one's, no one's moving to D. If anyone moves to D, it's on and all that, because cause obviously I'm having it with the whites. But waiver term didn't get didn't want to get involved, mate. Don't get involved in all that nonsense. It's tricky, isn't it? Because like I had a lot of co-defendants, and they were all. That's crazy. Because like most of the time, it's like you don't have a choice to get but to get involved. They don't give you that choice, but maybe because your name rang bells, they didn't put that pre apply that pressure to you like that. You know what I'm saying? Races. But then when you go in America, it's all you get all separated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know because it's mad over there. Was was there any riot situations? No, never no riots in top securities. But you know, there, there was yeah, because in jail and prison here and prison here, you roll with your race. So whatever gang you are outside of prison, you can really <laughs> throw that to the throw that to the wind. If you in big prisons, you better go. You got to go with your race. Of course, you can have your subdivisions. But like you gotta go with your race, because if if there's a big prison thing, this is what I've heard. My boy served six years in federal prison. He said if there's a big prison th thing going on, you gotta get with your race, and if you don't, you go against that, then you're not gonna be protected. <laughs> but there was there was brawls on the wings where the screws had leg it contain the wing, lock it off, mm. shield it all off so no one can get on or off, and then, then the Mufti will come on and, and take, the, take the ones who's responsible. Hold on, man. Hold on now. I'm trying to find something. It's very relevant to what I got going on right now. There it is. Found it, guys. 
but they're banging everybody up first. They won't ever come and grab you while the wings are out because a, a, a con in a dispersal won't see another con twisted up. You just go for them. If, if, you're, if they're jumping another con or the screws, the, con, the cons will jump them. That's what you had to do in them days. That, that, that's the motto. And, and it's all for one and one for all. So that, that was it, mate. So a few of our guests have come on and in the more recent years they said that the Muslim prison population has grown to the point now where it is the strongest. It's the strongest, strongest now. Strongest yeah, especially in top securities. Strong, strong as fuck. But there's a lot of good lads in them. There's some good lads in the terrorists. They're quite, they're quite witty. And you, you'll get them, the head Muslim of the wing, when, when, it, when it's fucking um, Ramadan, it'll come round, take your photos down, gives you TV, gives you mattress, take everything off and put it outside the cell. You, you're not allowed to look at eyes and all that, which is it's, it's the Sharia thing, isn't it? And that's, that's what they're living on. Right. But, you know, don't knock them. It, it, that's their thing. So leave it with me. I don't knock them. Don't criticise them. If that's what you want to do, you do that. You know, I'm not told you to eat a bacon sandwich, but I'm cooking my fucker. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So over your many years in prison then, have you seen drug culture change? Drug culture change, now it's all that bollocks mamba now. Spice. Uh, spice, but you know what they're doing it with? They're mixing it, well there was when I, on my last sentence, they was mixing it with floor cleaner and, and something, they was putting some, some other mixture in with it yeah. and selling it for 100 quid A4 paper and people smashed, collapsing on yards and that. Smoking paper and just gone, gone on the yard. <laughs> fucking horrendous mate and then we used to say phone a mambulance that's what we used to say to them <laughs> is fuck phone a mambulance we've just gone phone a mambulance yeah, there was a f- collapsing all over the joe it's a bad pandemic terrible so I, I i was in from like 2002 to 2007 and it was mostly heroin but heroin, some, yeah. some crystal meth yeah a lot of injecting going on was all that changed and it yeah there's not there's no heroin now mate unless a, a, unless a junkie will fancy someone he'll swallow a bit but mm. it's all it's all that mamba there's no yeah. there's no jail in it and people are wigging out on the mamba. Yeah, gone, gone. But the, I remember the heroin days where they just sit there doing that. Scratching just, just, just got Scratching gouging. the balls. The balls, <laughs> the nose, big red nose. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. In then, then days, I, just, I was happy with wearing an ounce of squidgy black and just sit and roll a few spliffs and get your napper down. Yeah. Just take you, out, take you out of the zone for a bit. Did you prefer having cellmates or not having cellmates? I don't like cellmates. I've oh, never no. really had them. I had Stuart because he was a diabetic and we mm. to each other, but after that, I've never had a cellmate since. It's like living in the toilet with someone, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, you have your toothbrush there and that, and you can't let people have a shit or fart where your toothbrush is. Yeah. And all that. So I used to wrap mine up. When, when I was with you, I used to wrap it up, because I'm dead OCD with things. Do you know what I mean? So I had to wrap them up and everything. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. after that, I said, listen, I want my Irish cell share back, mate. Otherwise, I'm going to fucking kick off. I'm not I'm not having two up with no cunt. And I, I, I never did it again. But in dispersals, you don't get two up. So in longer sentences, you slip into a routine, it goes, starts going fast, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. What was your routine? My routine, I did. I only ever trained legs, never done top off, but I was strong as fuck on legs. I, I, I was pressing 470s, but I could only get seven, never got 10. I never heard of that. You said I was only doing legs, never doing upper body? Like, what you mean? Like, well, is there a reasoning behind it, or is just, that just how you was feeling? I, w- I was curling 340s and all that on legs. My legs were massive. But I've not been, I've not been for about five years now. But my routine was the gym three times a week in the morning, then come back, because I was a cleaner on the wing, fry your breakfast up, have a good breakfast, a good protein shake, get your food out of the freezer for your nighttime meal. You know, you're four on the food boat, so one, one day someone will cook a chicken curry, next day it's steak and chips, you had a bit of salmon, you had all sorts, bolognese, all that sort of stuff. It was good routine. And here I am, eating McVetti's rich teas and, and tea, and Yorkshire tea. teammate and, and, and you put some good size on this is what the american viewers are very curious about because in supermax in america you can't get fuck all you can't, I, shit. I know you you can't even get yourself oh. and the, the, you, your canteen is restricted 24 7 23 23 hours a day seven days lockdown that's like and i tell you man in the uk i in that aspect when it comes to food and leisure time y'all be chilling <laughs> Did. Give you a little anti shank thing you can write letters with anti shank toothbrush oh, like this. 
And um, they let you out for handball like every three or four days with a handball cup. But they come and shout it like four in the morning when you sleep. So yeah, you so you box. don't hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which sounds like you've got a lot more liberties. In the top securities. Yeah. I'd rather be in them. If I ever got locked up again, fuck your C-cats and then B-cat trainers. Send me back to dispersal mm. with proper people. Because they're all proper people. The majority is never leaving the prison again. And they all respect each other unless he goes off. You know, pro- proper folk. Because it doesn't go off as much because there's more serious consequences. Yeah, yeah. Well, highest. it's death. It's death. It's a death. It's death, mate. Yeah. The consequences, you're going in the fucking ground if it's on you. So have you I, seen I, it go off? I've seen it go off loads of times. Could you yeah. give any stories on that? Whew, I've, I, well, I, I was in, um, I mean, I'd, shall I mention his name? I watched him kill somebody in Long Larton, stabbed his throat out, sex offender. There's been a few of them. There's been, been a few good stabbings where, they, where they've gone. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a few, mate. But the kid he was doing life and got another 25 year on top. So a lovely kid from London as well, another yeah. Londoner. Lovely kid called Dave, my good, good, good pal. It was like that, we was. At full sun. So, he, he, he said he was doing life with it, added another 25 on top. So if anybody is viewing, most of these people get life with, the, with a minimum served of 21, 23 years or something like that. Sometimes lower, sometimes higher. But you gotta go. I mean, until probation. But ain't no getting out if you if you add twenty five to it. That's, that's you done. Is that cold's good mate now as well? So you're saying it's it's usually over charges or is it over debts? Well, look, if you're a beast and you come in on the main wing, you're gonna get fucking killed. Yeah. You can't come on the wings. Yeah, you can't. Oh, you're a grass. You're a nonce. You go on the numbers, mate. Why you're would on. they fly undercover? Well, people people just like like to be classed as normal, don't they? Cause a lot of nonces don't think they've done it wrong. Right. You know what I mean? But so, even though they know the consequences of oh, death, are they, bit, on top. are they a bit naive? Or are they well, a bit... I, I don't know if it's naive, naivety or what, but some of them are just fucking blase to what's going to happen to them. Right. And then they walk, they're walking off and there's a big fucking tool hanging out your side of your neck and you, and you hit the ground and you're gone. Yeah. But you should have stayed. Hey, this for sure getting yellow mark. I ain't even going to try it. <laughs> Don't monetize me, please. You're on the numbers, you, you bastards. That's what I say. So you, you see those guys get filtered out fast then. Yeah. What about disputes between the fellas? Does that ever kick off? Well, what they'll do, it kicks off regularly, but mainly fighting, not a lot of stabbings, other disputes. Say, say your stereo's too loud. Turn your fucking stereo down. I can't hear the telly and, and it'll go off. So in the morning, someone will be pacing the cell up and down all night, para, you'll hear him sharpening up and you're telling him, look, leave it out, mate. Leave it out, we'll sort it in the morning. So they'll come out in the morning They'll have a swing at each other, roll around, they both go down the block, and then they'll come up, they'll shake hands in the block, they'll come on the wing, but then it's festering then. Oh. <laughs> so it goes off again, and that's when they have to get rid of one of them. Right. One has to go, you can't keep it. Once it kicks off, you've got to shift one of them. Yeah. Or if it kicks, say, for example, if it kicks off with you and you've got 30 mm. pals on the wing, mm. they're not going to move you, they'll move this fella. Yeah. Because of all your pals will get in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, that's how it is. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Quite often you see him punch it out and then they're having a hug and a smoke together. Yeah, smoke together. But then in your mind, you think, I'm going to kill you, you cunt. Right. <laughs> That's how it is. But hey, you're all right. So it's faster. There, there was a kid called Ian, right? A jock kid. Absolute gentleman. He's been moved to Shots Prison now. Ian McAteer. Liverpool. Liverpool, he'd done his murder, apparently. Right, so... Um, He's having an argument on the yard with a kid on the wing. I said, knock it on the head, Ian, the kid's all right. He said, no, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to chiv him. I'm going to chiv him. Anyway, Ian's gone in his cell, slammed the door shut, <laughs> chucked a blade at him and says, come on, one of us dying. He's fucking started to serve anymore. So, so the fella's screaming, getting stabbed to fuck, but the screws saved him. Wow. <laughs> fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Ian. Wait, so where is Sean? Okay, because in the beginning I said Sean, is, as he sound like he's from Liverpool. Throughout this whole interview, I meant to say, you know, it doesn't anymore. Um, where is he from? I'm interested. I like this whole style, like I said. Lovely fellow, mate. Lovely fellow. Loyal as fuck. And uh, his brother gets me now on, through YouTube. When I've been on YouTube and looked at them videos of me and Colin, his brother's left comments. And I say, you're Ian's brother and all that. Yeah, give him my best, mate. And all that. Where is he now? He's in shots, Dave. And oh. I'll tell him you asked for him and all that. You know, that's how you get out yeah. of that Facebook or oh, fuck that. What about suicides and self-harm? Plenty of suicides and self-harm every day. Every day, self-harm. Ripped up there, ripped up there, necks ripped. Every day, mate. Is that because of mental illness, drug it's, well, withdrawal, it, 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 depression? It, it's mental illness. Um, it's your family that fuck you off. Because, you know, uh, well, girlfriends. You see, well, probably, there's probably a lot of depression. Oh, yeah. Don't go in there with a girlfriend because she's gone. <laughs> At that point, she in the streets. Heavy.
Best friend probably going crazy with her. You see him looking out the window, waiting for the girlfriend's car to come. It's not coming. Yeah. And every week they're looking out the window. Thinking, and where is they're, it? They're never the same. Some yeah. of them no, no, no go, go. Our Colin done the best thing ever, you know. He got 35 wreck. They took him from Birmingham Crown Court straight to Longlaw and didn't bring him back to Woodhill, yeah. which, which stuck it on the screw. If one of us get found guilty, we're going to do you in, you cunt. Mm. Right, so he got found guilty, so they, they moved him straight there and he found his missile. He said, look, wait, just got... <laughs> 35 wreck from this day, me and you are finished, go and live your life. He said, I'm no good to you now, babe. Just live your life, which is a manly thing to do. Definitely. Leaving a man in on and sat there scratching your knackers thinking, who's she shagging? Who is she out tonight? And all that ballers. Fuck that. Did you have a word for that guy? Because we did. I think it was Sancho. <laughs> Sancho? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sancho's with your missus right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sancho. <laughs> okay. Good name. <laughs> Good name, my kid. But it, it, it's sad, isn't it? Because uh, that's, that's the lifeline, all those visits with the missus for a yeah. while, isn't it? Well, that, that's, that's your thing to keep you on the level yeah. and focus. When it's gone, got nothing to lose you want to die and you know a lot of people do they want to die they don't mind fighting against stab they're not bothered are they so yeah yeah it's fucking horrendous mate but it's horrible when, when you rely when you're relying on women like that mate and they blow you you shouldn't be relying on women be relying on yourself you gotta think about it though man what can you do for a woman behind bars you can't do nothing for her unless you left some out there for her like money you can't you can't assist you can't you know what i'm saying they're going to go with their natural instinct. Visits help you get through your... Yeah, yeah, I love my visits with my family. My family are key, aren't they? You know, I love my family. What do you like but... in the high security visits? Yeah, good, good visits. Do you Come in. sit with a person or are you behind the screen? No, uh, when you're high risk cate, there's a screw at your table where you're like, he's visiting you. And well, you're there. at the table. Yeah, you're, you're at the, the table. Screen. No, you're at the table. He's sat there with a tape recorder yeah. and you're sat there with your tape visitor. Recorder. He's got a tape recorder taping you and writing <laughs> notes down. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky cunt. Seriously? Cunts. Writing notes down about you and everything. Absolute scandalous. But that's because you're high risk cate. Are you allowed to have oh, a okay. everything? Yeah, you can do all that. You can yeah. organ all that. Mate, yeah, yeah, but they'll they'll say right, what get his stuff from there. They'll bring it through. So you have to go to the canteen or before the visit started. Order all the stuff, go in, and then the, the person from the canteen will bring the stuff through. So you can't drop out in it. You know that's what they used to do. It was it was, it was militant. So. In terms of but, getting food for your visit, do they have machines or you no? Go no the a, a, a lot of the jails now they've got machines as well as kiosks for when the kiosks are short. But full yeah. sort, and you could buy. Could buy fresh sandwiches, apples, pears, oranges. Could buy it, bananas. Have your visitors everything. got to do that. Your visitors have to. You can't yeah, buy them, but because yeah. you come in waiting for them, and you come in obviously in handcuffs because mm. your Irish cafe under guard and that. Yeah. So you get brought down in the cuffs. They take them off. You go and sit down. Then your visitors will come into you, and then the bird will come in with your tray of gear. So did you get access to better food through vis visits? No, no. Well, it's better food. It's better yeah. food than them fucking poxy sea cats and that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's not better food than it is on the wing because we never ate prison food. Apart from some, we had sandwiches and that, but you... Yeah, I was in there cooking up, like prison meals. That's decent. <laughs> Don't go, though. Boy, they got Benny Hanna's out here for free. For free men. Buying bread, loaves of bread, you're buying everything. You're buying all, all your spreads, cheese. So, so you said you could spend 25 quid a week on canteen. Yeah, on canteen. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. And you just have a sheet of paper, is it? Yeah, but like, say, say like that size. Yeah. You get probably seven sheets in a dispersal. Yeah. Front and back, full of everything. Right. Tins of beans, tins of ravioli, everything you can buy from Tesco. Joints and beef, All from chicken. Tesco. Yeah, it's not from Tesco, but everything you can buy it's from available, you'll get. Yeah, yeah. Joints of beef, chickens, fish, you get everything. What were your, your favourites? Curries. Curries? Curries. Always got in with the Indians, oh I did. Oh my god, and the Jamaicans. And the Jamaicans. The so they're cooking them up because you got Yeah, yeah. You say, Do you want rice and peas, Dave? Some good Jamaican Zebby and all them. <laughs> proper good kids. You say, I'm making some chicken soup. They used to boil, they used to cook the chicken at dinner, st strip it all on that, and then boil it for the next morning, and that was your soup. Put chilies in, boiled dumplings, everything. It was fucking beautiful. So in America, the theory behind not cooking and not having weight is it'll all be weaponized. Yeah. Does that stuff get weaponized in the UK? No, mate, because you go to the office with your key and say, Give us that knife. 
<laughs> they, they give you a fucking carving knife to chop, chop your meat up with. <laughs> and that's the top security. <laughs> it's mental. You give them your key or your card and they put it on the hook and they give you the blade. They say, yeah. right, you've got half hour with it, Gunny. And then take it back in half hour and if you want it again, give them your card again, get it again. Yeah. You get an half hour limit with them. But if you want to, if you want to serve somebody up, it happened at Franklin. Mm. Right, so what they had to do there, they, they, they rounded all the ends off of the knives. There were no points on them after that, after someone got stabbed up there. Mm, okay. Yeah. Oh. But crazy, you could just go and ask for a knife and go. If you wanted to kill someone, just fucking stick it in them. Yeah. And they've gave you the knife. Yeah. <laughs> fucking mark, bar- bar- uh, Americans watching this are just going to demise. It's ridiculous. They don't even sound feasible. I remember the first time I was watching some documentary and they said that I was what? You just go hand in your ID or your key and you just get a a whole knife to cook for dinner. Like what? Whoa! Wait a minute. Like this, and in America they using anchovy can tops to cut stuff. They ain't getting no tops. They ain't getting nothing. You better cut it open with an envelope or something. I don't know what. The... <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that's top security. <laughs> where 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 they search you every day for weapons because you cut in. Even the weights, people's heads were getting crushed in. They With took, the weights, all the weights yeah, out of yeah. America. Have they took them all now? Yeah, just in the, three weights well, on yards. And I've got to correct that actually because it's state by state. Yeah. So Arizona, where I was, they all, they all got took out. Fucking hell. Yeah, yeah. But well, every- I would imagine Arizona is really bad too. Every state has different laws and different prison systems and different rules and different gang rules. Yeah, and everything. yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. Fuck going to jail. I went to I went to see Nassim Ahmed box in '98. Had the visa and everything. Got off the plane at JFK. A big black fella on the thing. I've given him a passport. He scanned it. He said, "Not coming in here, punk." <laughs> <laughs> got a drug conviction, man. Straight downstairs from Thursday to Tuesday. Downstairs in the cells with a red suit on and I thought, what yeah. the fuck am I? Anyway, I've sat on the plane and about 30 other the lads have come on all with Macy's bags and everything. I didn't even get out of the, out of the air, airport. And the cells underneath, fuming, yeah. missed the fight and everything. So you got <laughs> deported back. But, yeah, back on the same flight though, but they just won't let me in, in the country. They said, you can't come in, sorry. You're banned from Hold on. Banned yeah. from America, so yeah. I never tried again. But I had a visa. Yeah. But obviously they've double checked it and said, "No, you ten pound rapper was it was? That was my drug conviction. <laughs> Not coming in, punk." <laughs> Looking back on your entire life, what was the high and the low? The high and the low. The, the high was when I had all my money, and and I was. What very, year was that? I had all my money it, up until two thousand and four. And that then I got locked up yeah. early two thousand and five. Then it then they was finding it and everything, found loads. You know, because they, they do the work, and they, you know, we've had them on as the top boys have been on as the James Bonds of the crew. They've yeah. been on us, so they know they watch where you go in, the picture where you go in, and all that. And and the serious low was my Jamie, obviously. It's been my worst low in my life. Still course, kills me yeah. to this day. I imagine that that my man. when when your brother got guilty, that was probably that was a know. serious low yeah. as well. But Jamie Jamie was the worst. You know, Colin's a big man. He he, he can he can handle out the truth, but you know, at the time, I I'd, I'd have given my life for our Jamie just to be yeah. only a young kid. Yeah, and not seeing life at all. Just had a boy. It's fucking heartbreaking. Yeah, heartbreaking, mate. Sad. Yeah. Fucking sad. You know, you just never get over it, mate. You never get over it. Mm. Losing, losing one of your kids and that. My sister, especially. Mm. It's terrible. Definitely. What about funny stories from your party days? Fucking hell, fire. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some crackers. Yeah. Had some real, real cracker funny ones, mate. No, cause obviously, you know, I'm telling you about about Omar one. I've had some good ones with him. With, yeah. <laughs> Had some proper good parties, mate. But funny, I, 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 I was always into the football, though, mate. You just concentrate on the on Forest and going to all the games and that, and, and having it on the terraces yeah. in my young days. So I, I was thriving off it. I loved it. So you found a you found rise of the foot soldier. Yeah, who Carlton Leach of that? Yeah. Seen it on Patreon. If anybody want to come watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he, he Carlton had a few words about us, didn't he, on that Law of the Gun documentary? I don't know. Yeah, what Carlton was, Leach was on there. Was, what was that about? Yeah, he, he, he bigged us up to be fair to really? him. Yeah, I respect, respected him for it. 
Because yeah, a lot of them will come on and slag the obvious you have done that, killing them, and you know, and all that, yeah. being, a ki- being, being convicted of that. But you didn't. You come on and, 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 and proper glorified it. for yeah, good lads, and it was on there with my pal Wayne Hardy. But they both, they both put good words in for us, which was nice to see somebody at least saying something nice about you. Because after all the media bollocks and all that, you're just getting assassinated every time. Yeah. And it, it gets to the state where you've had enough of it. You, you, you fancy swinging at someone, but. You don't know who they are who's leaving comments because you get all them detrimental comments off wankers on under pseudonyms and all that and you're never never going to find them and they never never you could leave your number they never ring you and say come on i'll meet you and let's have a straightener on the field they're like so yeah, yeah just wankers yeah. want to shout out the window not ever one time my boy probably really meet you in person and shake your hand and say you're a big fan they're putting different voices on they're, yeah. they're just tossers and they all know who we're on about all the all people who's watching this now a lot of you have done it mm. you know you're all wankers <laughs> it's as simple as that how did you become friends with curtis warren curtis my good pal i knew curtis in 92 when we we're doing a ball stall. no 83 when we we're doing a ball stall. Mm. and then obviously you moved on and moved on he's got big in the game and that cocky book come out in yeah. in, in, the, in the early 90s when i've read it and then I bumped into him. He was on the special unit with our coal. And I bumped into him at full sort. And he come there. I say, hey, up, Curtis. And Colin's brother, Dave, say, I know you, lad. And all that. I don't organ that. Been just dead good pals since then. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. But if super fit went down to that, Curtis did. Because he was a big unit, wasn't he? But he went mm. down to that super fit. Te- pad of tennis, badminton and the lot. Super, super fit. Love the, love the guy to bits. And I hope he gets out soon, mate. Because it's wrong what they've done to that fella. What did they do to him? Well, they was getting him another 10 for the, for the, for the proceeds of crime. He, fucking, he went to the phone asking about the price of weed and, and got about 13 years. And if that ain't enough, they've asked for 200 million for a phone call and get him 10 years on top, so where you do every day of it. So they're trying to shake him down. Yeah, shaking him down because of all the media. They did him dirty. They set an example with him. You know, they portray him as the richest criminal in British history. He's a billionaire and he's killed someone in a, in a Dutch jail and he's done this and they just throw all shit at you. And, you know, you get people who read it and, and they think, because it's been written by a reporter, it's got to be true. But reporters just want views. It's just false. Views and clickbait. Exactly. That's what I just said earlier. Remember I said that? People just be on here for clicks and views and, and whatnot, man. And that's why I like to go watch the real nowadays, man. The real stuff being podcasts like these with the actual person sitting there that can defend himself and debunk a lot of the stuff that's being said. Exactly. And the, the famous chestnut they use is, it's off a source, but we ain't got to disclose the source. <laughs> so you can't challenge it. You know, yeah, it's off a source, we ain't got to disclose it. And that's the line they use. Yeah. Complete tossers. But if yeah. they ever seen you, they'd fucking leg it. You wouldn't dream of coming up and saying, oh, I'm the reporter, I'm, I'm this and I'm this. I've had it, all, had it for decades. So on your longer sentence then, did you work your way down from the Cat A? No, yeah, what, what, uh, like I say, I, w- I, went to, I went from Cat A, and then I, I ended up at Loudon Grange for the last six months. And then I, they had this, I, 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 was, I was deemed Mapper 3, Level 3, the, with the danger to the public. So they, they said to me, you can't, you can't enter the city of Nottingham, you're moving from here straight away, get your kit back, took me straight to Woodhill. And about a week later, I was w- released, and I was in a hostel called Four, uh, Falklands in Northampton. Right, but there, that's where I swore and got recorded after about two months. And, and to be fair, I didn't, I didn't want to be in an hostel anyway. <laughs> but I, got, I swore. Bro, no you didn't. <laughs> you cussed that lady smooth out. <laughs> Snatched the envelope and threw it back in her face. That's assault. <laughs> anyway, rather be at home with my kids and that. You shouldn't do all your bird for four year old and then you're stuck in the fuck. But I'm gonna rock out with you. You swore and went back. They did you bogus. You know, I still win nonsense. What was your plan as you in nearer to your release? I, I, I was planning on, on just just resuming what I do to get dog. I'll do a couple of bits of deck collecting here and there. No, no frets, right? Just gonna say, look, yo, this dough, mate, are you gonna get it weighed in? Get, get paid, get good dough out of it. I've had a few good ones and it, it helps you live, doesn't it? So no drugs, I said, I'm never selling drugs again. Don't want to get near them, don't touch drugs. With my drugs, I have a couple of pints now. I've had two pints today and that's the first pints I've had for three and a half months. Not even had one. Brilliant. Yeah, I've just stayed off it all. And all these books then with all these legendary stories, is there any other stories that you need to put to rest? Mm, well, there's, there's obviously the one about my brother being be a fucking grass, I've, I've covered that. You covered um, that already. Being, being announced for shagging a 19 year old. <laughs> you know, but th- there's loads of stories one point to rest. They're all, they're all in them books. But yeah. I mean, I've got, I've got things in well, here. But is what this, Colin's is, told is me. the stuff in your notes that, that Colin wants us to go over? Yeah, let's have a look. 
I mean, I've done that. I've done that crackhead copper. Fucking idiot. This boy came in with a notepad ready. Like, oh yeah, this is my time. No one's ever seen that man in his lives, you know. And, and bearing in mind, he claims he's infiltrated and got us all locked up. Was locked up by Lincolnshire Police. No, to do in Nottingham. Colin's never been nicked for drugs in his life. He mean Lincolnshire Police? Fucking shit ass. Wasn't there something going on with Lincolnshire Police versus Nottingham Police? Yeah, of, of a, what they've done, um, they got a... Te you mean Nottingham Police? Telegram come through, from Nottinghamshire did, from Lincoln. No, from... Joan Sterland apparently had, had tele phoned a, the, the covering officer who dealt with them, right, who, who, who had a move there, right, phoned him and said, we've had a prowler in the garden. And, and the fella says, right, we'll, we'll send an email to such and such at Lincolnshire and they'll come and see you in the next hour, but it took him two days. And when they come, obviously, there was a deceased person. But Of course. He said, I'll send an email. <laughs> at that point, you might as well send a carrier pigeon. You ain't going to never see that email. For a minute. It's horrendous. It's fucking horrendous, mate. But th then there was all at war over it. See, with, with Colin, right? It was it was on it was on a trial. He's got another nine year th nine year three mo three months, right? Uh, for a uh, police corruption with, with with the copper who worked at Limes and all that, right? He got that. But what he done? He went to court, sacked all his legal team, and said, "Look, I'm doing a thirty five rec. Fuck your trial. Fuck off." And said, take me back to the Nick. So he got took back to the Nick and never went again. We got nine year, three months on top of the 35 wreck. Right, but on there, with, with them whack that wanker calling him aggressive and that, that is the time to say he was a police informant and this is how he was getting information and that. It never got mentioned, you know, because it's, it's never fucking happened. Mm. And that's the horrible thing about it. It's just to make him look a cunt, but he's, he's absolute, he's fuming, Colin is. And there's that paper in Nottingham. Um, he's wrote to them, they took everything down off the internet. This has all come from Felstrom. He's given them the information, print this story on Colleen Gunn. So they printed a story, and anyway, I've gone and seen him. I said, look mate, you're outrageous here, pal. I said, there's no foundation to this. I've shown them all the paperwork. I said, oh, fucking hell. I said, it's come off Carl Felstrom, Dave. I said, don't believe a word the man says, and that, and that junkie, and all that. But, but anyway, they've took it all down and apologised. They just wrote, wrote him a written apology. Fucking shit asses. But there's, there's, lots, there's lots of things, but they just wind you up then. A whole bunch of clickbait, man. He got three pages full of clickbait from reporters. Mate. Fucking wind you up, mate. Yeah. And, and then... The best clickbait of them all, the best example for newspapers doing clickbait, just watch Spider-Man. What's... J Jameson is his name? What's his name? The, the reporter that Spider-Man worked for? The best clickbaiter in the world, hands down. Fictional or non-fictional. And this is Bird, is a uh, who, who, who tried to claim she, he's told her things like fault. Colin wouldn't talk to nobody. Wouldn't even talk to my mates. Yeah, it was don't tight, talk to people. It? Yeah, tight. Wouldn't talk yeah. to nobody, especially about business. Yeah. No business got mentioned. Uh, you know, now and again he had a line of gear, but it, it was on steroids. Yeah, you know, maniac. But, but, but every now and again he had a line, and he come in the boozer, and then they'd fuck off because he didn't want to be around us. Because us lot was all all out of it and all buzzing. And you don't like to see laughter and people enjoying themselves. He did said Solomon, screw face, and mm. I'll bang one of these cunts and I'm fucking off. And they fuck. That's like like when I was dating my baby mama, I couldn't have no fun. Like, <laughs> as soon as she heard fun, uh uh, you know what I'm saying? Off. Yeah. So, how many siblings do you have? I've got there's me, Colin, my sister Julie, obviously Jamie's mother, and my young brother Andrew, who, who got kept clean out of it. I said, you're not getting involved, mate. You're not getting involved in our life. What does Andrew think about all this? Great, great. Because if he if he ever got needs for something, I'd I'd have to swallow it and say I did it because I'm not my man would have bar me. He's my young brother. I mean, yeah. he's fifty, but he's still my baby. Do, do you get me? And we kept him out of it. He's got his own business, tarmacking and dropping curbs and all that. He does really well. Bless him. Proud of him to be fair. And he stayed straight out of it. How's your mum coping with Colin doing all day? So well, she's swallowed it now, mate. But it's difficult. Because she's 79, my mum is. So it's very, very, very difficult. But she, before she dies, she wants this appeal to come through. Yeah. And this is what I was saying a, a, about the, the QC and what, what he's done with, with, the, with the main witness. Mm. Corrupt as fuck. Yeah. And um, does she go visit him more? Yeah, that? regular. Yeah. yeah, she'll go once a month. Then the lads will go up. Like, I, now, I can visit him now because I've finished my licence. I've had a GPS tracker on for 20 months where they've been following me without following me. So, And it's bit obviously bogged so they can hear what you're saying and that. All right, so Dave has got a ton of stories. We're hoping to develop a book with him, part two. 
That's it, man. So, hey, salute to the rest, man. It's a long one. Two hours till leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. Remember, the original video is down in the description. I'm done.